The moment has arrived. They're ready to break from the gate in the test of the champion. Last year's Belmont Stakes was a breakthrough win for Queens native Mike Rapoli as Mo Donegal delivered Hall of Fame trainer Todd Pletcher a fourth Belmont Stakes victory. Those same connections are back again in an enviable position with two-year-old champ Forte making his triple crown debut after scratching on the day of the Kentucky Derby. Arguably the best dirt horse in the game right now is Cody's Wish. He'll try to win a sixth straight as he lines up as the favorite in one of the most coveted prizes in the sport, the Met Mile. And three-time grade one winner Clarier and last year's Kentucky Oaks winner Secret Oath renew their rivalry after trading victories with each other in back-to-back graded stakes thrillers. All that and more coming up on a special Belmont Stakes edition of America's Day at the Races. Great to be with you, everyone. I'm Greg Wolf. Welcome to Queens, New York, here in Elmont as we get set for a very special day in this sport. Truly one of the great lineups you will see all year long in horse racing. Of course, highlighted by the grade one test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. We'll look through that field coming up in a moment and a chance for redemption for the two-year-old champion, Forte, who did not get an opportunity to run in this year's Kentucky Derby. Scratched on the day of the race. Horse he had beat twice leading up to the Derby, wound up winning the race. So you know how connections must have felt as we take a look at the lineup for the 155th edition of the Test of the Champion, the Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Betts. Nine will line up. Todd Fletcher, not just with Forte, he also has Tappet Trice, who, including Todd himself, many others felt this horse was just built for this racetrack and for this race. With me? Champion jockey has won more than his fair share of races here at the racetrack. Richard Migliori, how do you feel about this field lining up for this edition of the Belmont Stakes? Well, I think we've got a very competitive field. I'm very bullish about the chances of Tappet Trice. I don't think any horse has trained better than him leading into the Belmont from a pedigree standpoint and certainly from a confirmation standpoint, a horse that should relish the mile and a half. And not everybody's going to want all of that 12 furlongs. Meanwhile, two-year-old champ, and we're going to talk about Forte, Missing a race, and what, you know, racing fitness. You cannot get racing fit in the morning like you can in the afternoon. He missed the Kentucky Derby, which was a scheduled race to go for him. Does that put him behind the eight ball for a race like this? Well, I just think it's a very tall task to get 12 furlongs and not having competed in a race in, t in 10 weeks. His schedule was blown up when he had a scratch from the Kentucky Derby, wasn't able to compete in the Preakness. Now, he's got the right conditioner in Todd Fletcher to get a horse ready to go 12 furlongs because he put so much foundation in his horses, but it's still a big ask. We're watching the Florida Derby. I wouldn't have given anything for his chances leaving the 3 8 fall. Not only did he find a way to win, he ran down your eventual Kentucky Derby. Derby winner Mage and did it in, in about three strides when he finally found his best stride and watch when he picks up Mage quickly and some people say well Mage made a bit of a middle move he got picked up by a very good horse your two-year-old champion of Forte and watch his ears come up he says oh I did my job what's next no horse in his generation in his three-year-old class from the very beginning back as a two-year-old to now has been more consistent and delivered like Forte has really has. I mean, he had one poor start and his second start, and then a, 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 he's been perfect otherwise. And I love the fact that he showed he can overcome adversity in the Florida Derby. He was kind of wide in between horses in that first turn. That's a no man's land for a horse. Didn't look like he was handling the kickback well. When he angled widest of all, he found his best stride and he showed us what Forte is all about. Questions still, though, and questions for everyone every year when you go into this race. The, the mile and a half distance is one of those big questions sure. that you have to answer, and he'll have to answer it as well. Meanwhile, Brad Cox, he will send three to the race. Angel of Empire among them. With that coming out party for him, of course, in the Arkansas Derby, he'll have Hit Show, the Withers winner, and Tappet Shoes, who just missed in the bathhouse row. With more, let's go to Michelle Yu over here in the barn of trainer Brad Cox and he has three horses going postward in today's Belmont Stakes. The most notable would be the one that's right over my shoulder and that is Angel of Empire. He ended up being your Kentucky Derby favorite after the scratch of Forte and he wound up a fast closing third. Cox has been really happy with his training subsequently since the Kentucky Derby, especially impressed with his gallop outs, which we know can be important as he stretches out in ground. Another thing that Brad has been happy with because he's been saying all winter this horse wants more ground, more ground. His second entrant is going to be Hit Show, and this horse did some 
winter racing up here in New York, so it's a homecoming of sorts for him. He also ran second in the Wood Memorial before finishing a very good fifth in the Kentucky Derby. And the Wood Memorial did produce Mo Donegal last year, who went on to win the Belmont Stakes, of course. His third entrant is maybe his least known, but he's got a great pedigree anyways. His name is Tappet Shoes, and he is the half-brother to grade one winner Cyberknife, who Cox also trained. Brad said he'd pretty much have to run a career best effort here to get the job done, but don't sleep on him for the rest of the summer. He's hoping for a respectable finish here that can springboard him to some of these big races later on. Brad Cox does have a perfect record in the Belmont Stakes with a one-for-one -one try. He did win in 2021 with essential quality, and he will see if he can kick some of the funk that's gone on for this Triple Crown season and bag that second one here. Michelle, thank you. And that stretch stool with Essential Quality and Hot Rod Charlie in that 2021 edition of the Belmont Stakes, that was one of the great races and really of that year, one of the great Belmonts we've seen in a long time. Big effort from them, a lot of separation back to the third horse. And any time you see two young Colts duel after already running 10 furlongs, the Kentucky Derby distance, that last quarter of a mile, the 12th furlong of the Belmont Stakes, you know, to me, that's what defines true champions and horses that kind of distinguish themselves from the others. They find a way to get that extra distance. This race, maybe even more so than the Derby and the Preakness, where you want connections who have proven they've done it before in this race? Well, I think it definitely counts. You know, th there's an art to preparing a horse to go 12 furlongs. In a day and age in North American racing, we don't run that many races at this distance, especially on the dirt. A, a trainer that has the roadmap, if you will, to get them to the Belmont. Todd Putcher, certainly he has a, 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 an atlas of how to get there, and uh, certainly Brad Cox has one as well. Yeah, Todd Putcher trying to win a fifth Belmont Stakes today. Not just about the Belmont Stakes. Obviously, that is the big one towards the end of this card. Six grade ones on the program, nine stakes races on a stacked card. Here's what's ahead, presented by Claybird Farm. We are fast and firm for this Saturday action for the test of the champion ahead. True North early on, tremendous sprint stake with the Breeders' Cup sprint winner returning in elite power for Bill Mott. You'll see races one through six on FS1, races seven through 12 on Big Fox and FS1 as well. Of course, you can play all the action by getting signed up, started with Naira Betts. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. And these offers to help sweeten the deal. $25 free play on the Belmont Stakes plus that $200 sign-up bonus. New members to take advantage of those offers. That's the promo code you punch in. Belmont 25 at sign-up. Again, right there at NairaBets.com. We're just 12 minutes to post for our first race of the afternoon coming up. So to kick off the festivities, let's go upstairs to track announcer John Imbrial. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise and remove your hats as United States Army Staff Sergeant Francisco Iceporna performs God Bless America, accompanied by the West Point Color Guard. Looking forward to all the action ahead. And we're going to get to it right away. Coming up again, close to 10 minutes to post from our first action on the card. We'll begin sprinting on the turf. We'll set up that opener when we come back from a short timeout. We'll meet the field for the Belmont Stakes. And who will be taking home the August Belmont Trophy in this mile and a half test of the champion? We will meet the entire field. Coming up, stay with us. Just getting started on our America's Day at the Races coverage on Belmont Stakes Day.
Grade one winner on both dirt and turf, War of Will became a classic winner with this victory in the Preakness Stakes. He added turf credentials to his resume with a determined victory in the grade one Maker's Mark Mile. Now his first weanlings are commanding attention in the sales ring. Right here, 280,000. Better than 91,000. 165,000. 160,000 dollars, thank you. A dual surface classic winning son of Warfront, War of Will, standing at Claiborne Farm. Thanks for being with us on our FS1 coverage on Belmont Stakes Day here in Queens. As we get set for the first coming up, you can play all of today's action with Naira Bets. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Go to NairaBets.com and a money-back guarantee for wagering on the Belmont Stakes today. Make a $10 win wager on any one horse in the Belmont Stakes. If your horse finishes second or third, you'll get that $10 bet back, but you do have to opt in at NairaBets.com, so do not forget to take advantage of that opportunity. We get set for a special day in this sport. They're really just a small handful of days that you can count on one hand with lineups like we have this afternoon. The Bel or Breeders' Cup, obviously one of them. Today is one of them. Well, it's like an early season Breeders' Cup, and the depth of these fields is incredible. Great job by the racing office to put together a wonderful card, and the weather has totally cooperated. We have it. Absolutely picture perfect day. Started to get a little bit of rain last night. I said, where's this coming from? But yeah, you could not ask for a more glorious day. First race to kick off this card on Belmont Stakes Day. Six furlongs on the inner turf. Maiden special weight. Everyone looking for that first win. Here's the first time starter from the rail. Uh, yeah, by Carpe uh, Diem, a horse that gets 11% with his turf sprinters. And the mayor has produced one turf winner, albeit at a lower level, not taking any money on the board. Barkley Tag, who kicked off a triple crown with Tis the Law back in that COVID-induced 2020. Get respect cutting back. Now, this is a horse I like a lot. I love the turn back for this horse. I remember last year making a note that this horse probably wanted less ground than she was running. Adds blinkers. Good-looking daughter of Get Stormy. Uh, looks prepared. Roman Goddess, Mike Maker, Flavian Pratt. Uh, yeah, a horse that had issues uh, last time and actually finished with interest. Stumbled the second stride out of the gate. Lost all position. Actually finished okay. Speed going five furlongs down in South Florida. Oolong high for Mark Hennig. Yeah, maybe a filly that will appreciate being able to find a better rhythm. Those five furlong races, not, not a chance for horses to really get into a good stride. They just got to run all out from the start. Chad Brown, Klarovich, Stables, Arad Ortiz Jr. at five to two, accept the outcome. I think taking more money because of the connections, obviously very strong connections. This horse had absolutely no excuse last time. Thought she had a perfect trip, just came up second best. Quiescent has shown speed in that first turf try very good and then went backwards. Uh, yeah, last time took kind of regressed, gets back to six furlongs, and you get uh, five pounds off with Jason Weyas aboard, the apprentice jockey. It's a big price and more pace with the seven spun special with your derby winning rider, Javier Castellano. Yeah, definitely a player here. Horse showed speed at Aqueduct last fall when put on the turf. Grand Dam was a graded stakes runner on turf for Dankin. 
Avalanche is coming, is going to get on the lawn for the first time. Yeah, I didn't see, you know, other than get Stormy, who is all turf. On the female side of the family, a lot of turf pedigree. Big price for a horse that could show some speed. Big turf debut from Love to Shop at Belmont. I was going seven furlongs early May. Yeah, I thought she kind of made a long extended run going seven eights. How's that going to translate to six? I understand her being a favorite. I'm looking elsewhere. Cindy Lou, who I thought a player in here at 12 to one. A absolutely a player. His run race is good enough to certainly put her in contention. Ran well at Kentucky Downs. Uh, Kentucky Downs, a little bit of a different kind of uh, animal, if you will. A lot of undulation in that course. And two first-timers to the outside. Here is one of them. This one for George Weaver with Luis Saez. Uh, yeah, good, strong connections. She's been training up in Saratoga. Um, and by Bolt Arrow, both the outside runners. Yeah, Todd Pletcher with a first-time starter on the outside. He has the favorite as well, but this one with turf pedigree at a huge price. Yeah, this is a half to Bolo, a grade one winner on the turf. The mare's a producer. Todd's very proficient with first-time starters. Be interesting to see how she takes to the turf. I don't see any turf workouts on her uh, page, but she does have a turf pedigree. Now, we talked about one of the long shots, Cindy Lou Hu, 12 to 1 right now. Florent Giroux will be aboard with more on this five-year-old mare. Let's go to Michelle. Thanks so much, Greg. I'm joined by the ownership group and a big one at that. This is a Teresa Palmer and her family. I need to know the baby's name. Lucy. Lucy. Now, you told me, though, that you named things after the Grinch because that's a big fan. You didn't name her Cindy Lou Who. No, her mom and dad <laughs> had that privilege. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about Cindy Lou Who because you do say you, you like to name all of your horses after one of your favorite movies. Yes. Um, well... We had another Bodemeister filly by the name of Cheermeister, so she started um, kind of the ball rolling there. And when we got Cindy, we thought, well, she's a Bodemeister. Let's get another sweet name from the Grinch. And so um, we thought of Cindy Lou Who, and um, so it kind of evolved from there. And you guys came up from Florida for this race. What brought you to Belmont with her? Well, uh, Gulfstream for the summer has no turf racing mm -hmm. now, and she is a turf horse. So we looked at some options, and we love Belmont, um, and thought this might be a good spot to try her at. What would it mean to get a win on Belmont's fake day? Oh, it would be very special, especially since our son is the trainer, and this is his family, his wife, and two of his four children. So it would be very special for us. Best of luck here. Thank you so much. You guys will be cheering on Cindy Lou Who so we can have a cutie in the yes, winter circle. Thank you. Very cute. Creating a new horse racing fan right there. See if she brings good luck to the connections of this five-year-old mare that's getting an advanced age here trying to get that first win. Yeah, I mean, she's lightly raced, though, and she does have races that would be good enough to put her in contention here. And uh, I'm a soft touch for a cute baby. <laughs> As, as a new grandfather, of course you are. Nine to five favorite, loved his shop. So debuted on Dirt Saratoga last summer. Didn't see this one again until May of this year and moved to the grass, seven furlongs. And you sounded like a little trepidation with going a different distance here at six furlongs. But didn't it feel like she needed every bit of that seven furlongs with the rally that she put in at six, shorten it up? I mean, it could intensify her late closing kick, but it also might make it a little bit more difficult for her. Listen, she, she ran well, and I, I think this is a very good effort from her. I, just at a, at a shorter price, I have my questions about her going to six. See if she's up to the task here. Start number three, Tyler Gaffleon will ride for Pletcher. Nine to five, you can follow along with all the horses, trainers, jockeys, by downloading free Equibase past performances, go to naira.com forward slash TV schedule. And get your Equibase free PPs. All right, back to Get Respect. Long time out, have not seen since July of last summer at Saratoga. Now this one, going to try sprinting for the first time. Yeah, and I just thought last year when she was going a mile and a 16th and then a mile at, at Saratoga, she was a filly that wanted to run through the bridle, meaning she didn't, like, go to the front and then put her ears up and settle. She just wanted to run hard the entire way. Horses like that, to me, don't stay the trip. They don't go two turns. They don't go a mile or beyond. I was always thinking she'd be better sprinting. Barkley Tag is a terrific horseman. 
She comes into this fresh, but I like that for her going six furlongs and adding blinkers. I don't think she's going to be outfooted despite the turn pack. I think she's going to be forward and get a good, good position. And Dylan Davis, who struggled early this meet, has finally really kind of come out of that slump he was in. You can see his confidence level is, is getting higher again. And I, I think that's important. Riders need confidence, just like any other athlete. You've got to be in a zone. Post time coming up, early pick five begins here. Let's go to Michelle. Oh, Wolfie, the five is going to be my top pick on paper, except the outcome. And she looked fantastic over in the paddock and on the warm up here. I gave her a big green check mark plus. She looks very European turfy style, which really suits with her pedigree here. I thought she ran fine on debut. I think seven and a half is a super challenging distance to try and debut at. And she came right back to run a good second. I think that she's been in these big fields and taken some pressure and she still run on well. Uh, I think third time is going to be a charm for her today. So she was my top top pick for sure. I also wanted to talk about the 12 a little bit, advance attack. Um, well known Dubai trainer Fazi Naz is actually in on this horse and she's been training over in Dubai before she came stateside. And when they were in Dubai with her, they didn't have a bevy of two year olds to train her with when she was younger. So they started working her with multiple grade one winner, Salute the Soldier. They're actually pretty bullish on her because of that I felt like uh, working her with some big time older male horses in the morning and she kept pace with them pretty handy. She could be in here at a big price on debut. All right, we'll see. We talked about that pedigree, certainly with that outside runner. Pick five pool over $1.2 million here. Get involved again at Naira Bets. You can play this without putting any of your money on the line and compete for real prizes as well, not to mention bragging rights. It's a showdown free online contest. Go to naira.com forward slash showdown to get involved. Pace-wise in here, we have a few that look like they want to go to the front, Meg. Yeah, I, I think we're going to have a, a more than legitimate pace. This course has been very lively anyway. Even a horse that's never tried the turf before, who I don't give any, uh, you know, honestly, a, a win candidate here, I don't believe, is the eight. Uh, Avalanche is coming. Horses that show speed going four and a half at Charlestown, and we, that's what we refer to as a bull ring, right? It's a five-eighths of a mile racetrack are usually very quick. Their gait speed is fast. So th that horse can be involved in, in, in several others as well. Loading up. Nine to five favorite. Love to shop. Can this filly be as effective at seven or at six as she was at seven in that turf debut? Coming up, going a little bit short of the figure she earned in that race. She is a standout in this group, but you improve by leaps and bounds with these young runners getting more experience. Yeah, and listen, maybe I'm being a little hard on her. I just was attracted to the two get respect. Um, I give respect. I like to get respect. But I think she's going to really appreciate the turnout. You've earned it the way you rode on this circuit. Let's go upstairs, kick off this Belmont Stakes Day card with John Imbrial. Number 12 advance attack goes in. We are set for the opener. And they're off on Belmont Stakes Day. And it is Quiescent who is going out for the early lead. Oolong High now moves up down at the heads. And the Gray Spun Special next in third in between horses, except the outcome runs in fourth. Get Respect down on the inside in fifth. Far outside is Riviere in sixth. Love to Shop is seventh at this point, almost five lengths from the lead. Then comes Avalanche is coming along with Advance Attack on the outside. A break of three lengths back to Rome in a day and uh, Cindy Lou Hu. The quarter in 22 and one fifth seconds. And it is Oolong High on the inside leading here by a neck, quiescent along with on the outside except the outcome. And on the far outside it is Riviere as the field hits the top of the stretch. And it is Oolong High in front. Quiescent is down at the hedge, except the outcome in between. Riviere on the outside. And then Spun Special, Love to Shop, out in the middle of the course. They're coming down for the 16th pole. And Love to Shop is coming on now. Love to Shop gobbling up the ground in the final 16th to win going away. Love to Shop the winner. And Spun Special completes the exacta. 
Love to shop. Fla Tyler Gaffleone, excuse me, for Todd Pletcher here, second time on the lawn, sitting mid-pack early in this race and showing a big late run on the stretch. Yeah, and the turn back actually did intensify her late uh, closing kick, and Tyler Gaffleone contributed an absolutely beautifully well-judged ride. The producer at the right moment come with that big run in a nice way for Todd Pletcher and Mike Rapoli, as well as St. Elias Stable, Vinny Viola, whose Florida Panthers are fighting for the Stanley Cup now, down two to one in that series. Start off the day the right way with a nice win. We'd love to shot. Gotta feel energized, these connections who have a yeah, big, big shot in the Belmont Stakes to kick off the card with a win. Spun special, 22 to one, by the way, underneath. Another big price, the 11 in there at 28 to one, but it's the favorite for Todd Pletcher, who's seeking a fifth Belmont Stakes victory. Kicks off this card. Yeah, and listen, it, it's so important for not just jockeys to get off to a good start in a day like this and get into a good flow. Connections. I, I believe horses feed on positive energy. The barn's going to be upbeat. Everything starts off the right way, and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day. Let's meet the field that will line up in this 155th edition of the Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Betts. Post time, 7.02 Eastern. And the two-year-old champ, Forte, for the connections you just saw win the opener. We'll send out that two-year-old champ. Tap and choose, one of three in the race for trainer Brad Cox, Jose Ortiz rides. Uh, yeah, has the pedigree certainly being by uh, uh, Tappet, but he's gonna have to step his game up and improve. No reason he can't though. Three-year-olds change a great deal this time of year. Tappet Trice, the other Pletcher runner in the race, who had done very little wrong before that Kentucky Derby. I've just been taken with the way this horse is trained up to the race. Tappet Trice has done everything the way you want to see it. I think he's going to relish the mile and a half, and I love that stall shot of him. He just looks like a very composed, clear-eyed individual. Son of Arrogate next door for Jenna Antonucci, looking to become the first female trainer to win the Belmont Six. This horse just showed grit and determination in that Peter Pan. A horse with a lot of talent, certainly another one from a physical perspective and a pedigree perspective, being uh, by Arrogate out of a tap at Mare. He's got a pedigree that screams a mile and a half as well, and could we have an all gray exacta? National treasure, this is the one for Bob Baffert, who went gate to wire in that Preakness victory. Yeah, and listen, he's a classic winner already, but man, he got to control the Preakness. Now, I think he's going to be controlling the, this race on the front end. The mile and a half is a bigger question for me than some of the others. Il Miracolo, huge long shot in this race. He was able to go gate to wire with fairly slow fractions and softer company last time out. Yeah, it just feels like he's gonna have to improve vastly. He's looking for uh, Il Miracolo. It would be if he was able to pull off this upset for trainer Antonio Sano. The Ter two year old. Oh, go terrific ahead. horseman, though. Really good horseman. Two year old champ Forte did not get the opportunity to run in the Kentucky Derby. Would have been the favorite. Gets his chance here in the Triple Crown. Well, when uh, 2023 ends, he ultimately might be the best three year old. He certainly was the best two year old of this crop. Just a tall ass to come into this Belmont after his schedule was blown up, not being able to compete in the Derby. Ten weeks since he last ran. Two more Brad Cox runners right next door to each other. One of them, Hit Show, who won the Withers here in New York in February. Uh, Hit, Hit Show's a player. Uh, another gray horse that's got a big shot here. I thought his Derby was very good. And he's got that kind of grinding, stay at it style stride that could suit the mile and a half. Stable mate, Angel of Empire. Closing third in the Kentucky Derby. Skip the Preakness, shows up here. Was my top selection in the, the Derby. Got a good trip on the Flavian Pratt. Thought he leveled off a little late. Major player here, uh, adds blinkers, and a horse that uh, should get the mile and a half as well. Wound up going off a very mild favorite in the Kentucky Derby, by the way. Red Route 1, he will be very far back early. Trained by Steve Asmussen with, with Joel Rosario. It just feels like he's gonna have to improve, um, and, and I just don't know that he's gonna get pace that's gonna help set up his style. 15 to one morning line for that son of gun runner. Back to the opener. Love to shop with Tyler Gaffleone for trainer Todd Pletcher, and second time on the lawn for this filly. Breaks her maiden, career start number three. Did it nicely too, really kicked in the high gear. Got it done, loved the shot from off the pace with Tyler Gaffleone. Nice ride, spun special. You get 22 to one. 
on Hall of Famer and Kentucky Derby winner now, Javier Castellano, Oolong High, set the pace, ran well. Um, my selection wasn't very good. The two get respect. Nine, seven, four, finish. Let's go to Michelle. Guys, I'm standing here with Mike Rapoli. I, I go back to the Florida Derby, where you guys had a fantastic day before winning with Forte. Is there some foreshadowing going on? Well, we were three for three, and I was afraid of going uh, three for four with Forte losing. But you know what? You know, I got we have 80, 80 people today. Only 40 showed up for the first race. These are the real racing fans or degenerates. We're not sure. But, uh, you know, to get a win right away, get the day started right. Um, what a beautiful day of racing, clear day. You know, these are what days that you dream about. I know it's been a uh, tremulous road with Forte to get here, though. What would the Belmont mean to you? You know, I mean, we won it last year, so that meant so much. But this horse, it just means so much because I, I know he's won six out of seven. He's the best three-year-old colt in the country. And I think today is his day to just prove, hey, I beat Mage twice. I beat National Treasure in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and I'm going to beat everybody else. And you brought the good luck charm. Always brought, uh, we brought uh, Bamboo with us and, of course, Joy, right? Yeah. Who's, who's luckier, you or Bamboo? I don't know. Pick one. Pick one. Ty. Pick one. Pick bamboo. One. There you go. You're right, bamboo. bamboo. Bamboo, the lucky, the lucky bamboo bear who has never not been to a winner's circle with Forte, guys. It's won a lot of big races, Mike Rapoli. And how about this? Not just starting off the day, those silks in the winner's circle, but a, a three-year-old by violence kicking things off. Of course, the sire of Forte. Yeah, right, right, kind of all coming together, right? We got a lot of connections there. Mike Rapoli, the quintessential New Yorker, right? And, and he loves this game, and he brings so much energy to it, and I love all the people he brings out with him. I like you said, we had 40 that showed up that are real racing fans. He probably has, and there's a lot of syndicates with multiple owners, he probably has the biggest wind circle photos of anyone. I, I, I think he's the track photographer's best friend. <laughs> no question. A lot of orders after his horses win from everyone that shows up. Moving on to race two. We'll be on the lawn for this one as well. This will be at seven-eighths of a mile. New York Preds, first allowance condition. This is a wide open race the board reflects. Right now it's the four. Weekend rags, Jorge Abreu. Turf debut is a win. We'll face winners for the first time. Who's a three-to-one favorite? Tough race, wide open. We'll talk much more about it. When we come back from a timeout, first 5,000 through the gates. Hurry on and get here. Get this commemorative 1973 program, exact replica of the year that Secretariat completed that triple crown sweep back in 1973. We'll be back right after a break. They're off in the Breeders' Cup to the The final leg of the Triple Crown, no matter where you are with Naira Betts. Available nationwide, Naira Betts is the official betting app of the Belmont Stakes with video streaming, weekly promotions, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Celebrate the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's legendary Belmont Stakes win and be a part of the action with Naira Betts. Scan now for your free $25 Belmont Stakes bet, plus a $200 deposit match for new members with promo code FOX25. Number one is Mo Donegal by Uncle Mo. And they're off in the Remsen. As they come on for the finish, and it's going to be tight here in the Remsen. Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal bearing down on the outside. It's Mo Donegal and early voting. And it is Mo Donegal to win the Wood Memorial. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. Reach for the unreachable. Race to new horizons. The artisan's quest for beauty burns in the heart of Japan, forging strength like no other, with love and honed to perfection. Noble, authentic, and only here. The legacy of strength. is a city of legends. 
past and present. From the pinstripes to the blue shirts and the star-studded stages of Broadway, the Big Apple has had its share of icons. Big Sandy is no different from affirmed to slew to the Pharaoh and justify. All have etched their names in Belmont lore. But one name rings louder than them all. Fifty years, and the record still stands. No horse will don the crown this year. That doesn't mean we won't see something special. The daunting trip still awaits the chosen few. All eyes set on the test of the champion. Been commemorating and honoring that performance from 50 years ago of the great secretariat here in the Belmont Stakes. Well, he is not just one of the greatest thoroughbreds of all time. Secretariat transcended this sport, remembered as one of the great all-time athletes in any sport, period. He, of course, saved his best for last in the test of the champion. That masterpiece, 31-length romp in the Belmont Stakes 50 years ago. We take a look back at just how special a moment in time that was for Secretariat and his connections. By 1973, 25 years had passed since Citation was crowned our eighth Triple Crown winner. Then came Secretariat. He had been named Horse of the Year at two first Colt in history so honored. He was an extraordinary horse. He was so smart, so intelligent. It was really unbelievable. Not only is he loaded with ability, but he's loaded with charisma, and he's got a, a charismatic owner, and it just was a hell of a story, you know, it really was. No horse casts a shadow over racing and American sport like Secretariat did and still does. I'm just amazed that he's, it never stopped, really. Uh, he's as popular today as when he was running. Is widening now. He is moving like a tremendous machine. You can hear the announcer calling how far in front that was, and then moving like a tremendous machine. I heard all those things, and when I turned for home, people were jumping up and down in, in the stand, and Aubrey, I'm looking at the teletimer. Looking at the clock, how fast I was going, and I was breaking track record all the way down the lane. Secretariat has opened the 22-length lead. He is going to be the Triple Crown winner. Here comes Secretariat to the wire. An unbelievable, an amazing performance. He Chick Anderson called it on TV. I called it for the track. Secretariat was the best horse in the world on the day of the Belmont Stakes. The chestnut marched into history in the most emphatic way possible. A winner 31 incredible lengths in front of the next horse, establishing a new American record for the mile and a half. It was just incredible. I mean, you never saw a horse win by that amount. Secretariat was a real rock star. He was on the cover of so many national magazines. I think it's only coming once in a lifetime. But I'm hoping that I will run up on when it happens. And I'll never forget him as long as the day I live. When we took him back to Claiborne and retired him, I was just very, very hurt to have to give him up. I, and that surprised me. I, I didn't know that I felt so strongly about him. Me, I thought it was the saddest thing in the world someday when that man come over there to take him away because, uh, like I said before, I don't think you'll ever see a horse like him in many, many years to come. People know Claiborne because of Secretariat. For whatever reason, he came along and captivated the nation, and um, everyone knows who Secretariat is. Even if you weren't alive during that era, you know who he is. He was just the, the most incredible athlete that day that we've ever seen, and we won't see it again. They'll never beat Secretariat's record in the Belmont, ever. Every day I get lots of letters, and it's amazing, and that's just throughout the world, it's not only. It's not only America. Besides my family, he's my first love.
People say all the time in this game, records were meant to be broken. I, I don't think for a, a couple things with Secretary to this case. New track record, every single leg of the Triple Crown, and of course, m maybe the greatest performance in the history of this game in that Belmont. 224 is what he went the mile and a half. No one else has come close. 226 is the next closest time, two full seconds slower. Yeah, and, and actually one of Secretary Sun's recent star had a very strong Belma, but nothing's ever going to match what Secretary did that day. I don't want to speak about generations before I was born, like Man of War and Citation and horses like that, but in my lifetime, that is the single greatest performance by a racehorse I have ever been privileged to witness. Just incredible, and we celebrate this 50-year anniversary of the great Secretariat. See what happens in today's edition of the 155th edition of this Belmont Stakes. We'll talk plenty more about it coming up. We'll also talk three-year-old Philly division for the ladies in here. And we went into the Kentucky Oaks this year with no real clear-cut leader at all. It seemed like such a wide-open division. Well, someone has stepped up and claimed leadership after this performance in the Acorn yesterday by Pretty Mischievous. We'll take a look back for this Brendan Walsh Philly when we return. Back with you on our FS1 coverage of America's Day at the Races. Another look at our borrowed Secretariat statue on a beautiful Saturday afternoon as we await still to come. Six grade ones on this card, including the test of the champion in the Belmont Stakes. Well, yesterday it was the Acorn three-year-old Phillies and the Kentucky Oaks winner pretty mischievous showing up for Brendan Walsh and proving she is absolutely the leader of this division. Yeah, she, she's definitely the leader of this division. The Philly, they added blinkers to to kind of keep her focused, had a tendency she'd hit the front and wait. And I actually think she hit the front here and waited a little bit. Dorth Vader, very game on the inside under Johnny Velasquez, fought back. But it just seemed like when she get, met the challenge again, pretty mischievous, put her head out and kept fighting. And, Feels like if they had gone even further, Greg, the other Philly wasn't going to get back to him as long as pretty mischievous star. Tyler Gaffion did a really good job of just easing her down to her to meet that challenge. But a nice effort from both of these Phillies. Dorth Bader at a big price under Johnny Velasquez, a horse I know a lot of people were high on, but pretty mischievous right now to me stands alone as the leader in this division. Four wins, her last five starts, Kentucky Oaks win, now the Acorn as well. And maybe this division not quite as wide open as we thought. 
No, I mean, she's put it together. And, you know, how do we define who takes the lead in these situations? A horse that's consistent. She's been extremely consistent. And obviously the addition of Blinkers, Brendan Walsh figuring, I got to get this filly just a little bit more focused, not give her more speed, just keep her to her task. Well, that was yesterday in the Acorn. Again, six grade ones on our Belmont Stakes Day card to come. We're going to talk with Jenna Antonucci trying to make history in the Belmont Stakes with Archangelo. She had said of this horse, she's going to be joining us a little bit later on on the set. Obviously talented, but he has things you cannot teach. Heart, grit, determination. He showed that in that Peter Pan victory. She'll join us after a short timeout as we continue with our Belmont Stakes Day coverage on FS1 right after this. Whatever you use to predict future stallion success, breathe slowly and gaze at the desert's first great championship race. Curlin won it. So did Street Cry, Arrogate, and now in a time even faster than Arrogate's Mystic Guide. The cold hard fact is, after this, he was rated the best horse in the world. Mystic Guide, new to Darley. impressive horses I've ever seen physically. Independence Hall is pouring it on here in the Nashua Stakes. One by maybe a dozen lengths. Independence Hall wins the Hagyard Fayette. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Back with you on America's Day at the races on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon from Belmont Stakes Day. It's brought to you in part by America's Best Racing. For the love of the race, visit americasbestracing.net today. Race two on this Belmont Stakes Day card. Kicks off the early pick four. Seven furlongs sprinting on the turf. New York Breads exclusively in a first allowance condition race. We talked about it earlier, wide open. Favorites at seven to two. We have three of them on the board at that same price. Yeah, it's a wide open race. And seven eights, kind of that high bred distance on the turf. We don't run a tremendous amount at that distance. Um, very competitive race. I've got a couple of ideas, but I hope they're better than my pick in the first race. <laughs> Long way to go. This one right here, I'm having a moment trained by Bill Mott, who has his sprint champion and mile champion, dirt mile champion still to come. I actually ran extremely well last time, completely missed the break, got left, rushed up into position, stayed on well. If she can get out of the gate cleanly, she's a major player. Oh, this is a major player, too. Manny Franco from Mike Maker, so Lieb. You're coming off a win at this distance, her best race. And how about previous to that? She actually started over hurdles going two and an eighth miles last fall. Weekend Rex, she needs to improve. She can, though. She's coming off a maiden win. She's lightly raced. Lightly raced, certainly has ability speed in a race that I see some other speed signed on. Next door, five-year-old mare who's just two for 21 lifetime. You should be dancing. The last time she won was with Jose Ortiz, who took her way back and came with one big run. Look for her to be charging from off the pace again. Jorge Abreu as current favorite. He also has Lisa's vision, Flavian Pratt, six to one. Yeah, another horse that certainly has run well enough, has a start off the bench, kind of shake that ring rust off, get to a better fitness level, a player. Royal Dancer, Kendra Carmouche, on occasion she has shown very good speed. Yeah, another one that if she gets away cleanly, because if she has at times not broken as sharply, certainly could be a part of this pace. 
cut back in distance for Lady of Throat and for trainer Chris Engelhart. She overcame a glacially slow pace last time and came with this big, relentless run. She'll get more pace, less distance, but more pace today. So big long shots to the outside, including this one. I'm nervous now. Mike Deeney trains. How I feel going into every show. I'm nervous now. Um, this horse uh, going to have to improve from what we've seen. You thrive on that. You're, you always deliver, Mig. And then Galley Head outside. This one cutting back as well slightly with Tyler Gaffleone. Yeah, Broker Maiden uh, against Open Company for Maiden claiming at Tampa Bay. Came back and won again at Tampa. And Gets back with New York Breads. Uh, her races over the winter were decent, though. First time on the lawn for Silver Skillet, and there's some pedigree there. Dam actually won the debut. It was on dirt. Started three for four, but was a two-time winner on the grass. And, and a stakes winner on the turf, it, albeit a, a non-graded stake, but a stakes winner on the turf. This is a horse that has shown a lot of promise and just quite hasn't fulfilled, I think, the promise they, were, they held for her. So they're going to the turf for a trainer, Christophe Clement, whose horses do excel in turf races. Maybe wakes up with the surface switch. And right now, Silver Skillet, 13 to one. Pick four pool, closing in on $300,000. This man right here, victim of his own success for those that want to wager on him, Arad Ortiz Jr., four-time Eclipse Award-winning rider, and his mounts always get over bad, especially here in New York, to a tremendous degree. Here's his lineup to come later on. He's gonna be on the Sprint Champion, in our next race in the True North Elite Power. Yeah, pretty nice lineup of mounts for Irad today. And, and as much as his horses get over bet, he delivers. Um, and, you know, we've seen it over the years. You know, Steve Cawthon moved the board. Angel Cordero moved the board. Jerry Bailey. Irad's in that zone right now. And people that maybe aren't as sophisticated handicapping go, well, I'll go with Irad. But it's sometimes, it, I, I can't speak to them. I wasn't in the game, but it's sometimes it is to a ridiculous degree here. No, no doubt, no doubt. But again, it, it simplifies it for some people that maybe aren't studying the past performance as hard as we do because of our job. They go, well, when in doubt, go to IRAD. Two minutes of post coming up at the start of our early pick four. Let's go back to Michelle. Thanks, Greg. Taking a look right now at my top choice in this race, the one I'm having a moment for Bill Mott, who we saw with a nice victory yesterday. Going to be stretching out here from a six furlong turf try last time out, but I like the fact that she has a couple of route races under the belt. I know that they are on the main track and are running on grass today, but I just feel like that gives her that extra foundation that I'm always looking for um, from a horse. Also, love the way she came out. She looked good in the paddock, and her warm-up was so good. Johnny V had her turned loose, and she was just galloping with really solid energy, ears pricked forward, very interested, and a nice nice turfy motion to her. So I liked I'm having a moment, and I've seen nothing to put me off of her yet. I also liked the six on the warm-up, Lisa's vision for Jorge Abreu, who has a couple in here. I would say last time we can give her an excuse that she needed one. She was coming in off a layoff. Prior to that, she had put together two really good efforts since finding a distance that she liked. So when she ran a little more poorly, I guess you can say, than I expected, her to barely splitting the field I feel like okay we are going to be able to expound upon that build upon it they also went really quick and while you think oh she can come from behind and they go fast I think she wants to lay a little closer than she was able to in that particular race so when they go a little bit slower if they go a little bit slower she'll be able to have that kind of tactical advantage that she wasn't able to get when they blazed along in her return to the races Michelle thank you Five to two, public really starting to settle in now on this Mike Maker filly so lib with Manny Franco. Yeah, I mean, her effort last time was huge. I, you know, if you look at her form from last year, you know, a race over hurdles, different distances. For her to come back and respond sprinting on the turf uh, first time for Mike Maker, that, that was a huge effort. And it's certainly very capable of following that up. A trainer who has been... He's good at a lot of things. One of the absolute best claiming trainers there is in this sport, but he's been a master at getting horses, claiming them, and turning them into distance horses on the grass. Yeah, it's interesting, too. Mike Maker, we don't see a lot of him except for, like, up in Saratoga in New York. He, you know, he has a division here, but he spends most of his time in Kentucky. First person I saw this morning when walking in was Mike Maker. <laughs> yep, just walked past us a little bit earlier. Five to two. On his filly here by the Triple Crown champ, American Farrell. And, you know, back to Bill Mott. We're going to see uh, elite power 
for him coming up in the True North Breeders' Cup. Spring winner, of course, Cody's Wish. I think maybe the most dominant dirt horse there is in the game right now. Um, we will see in the Met Mile. Just a, one of the great trainers of all time, obviously a Hall of Famer. What a renaissance he is having right now. Yeah, just, you know, he's got really good horses. He's got them in great form. Uh, and listen, Bill Mott's been getting this done for a, a very long time. Youngest trainer to ever be inducted into Racing Hall of Fame, supplanting the late, great Alan Jerkins for that, that title, if you will. Uh, Lee Power's very good. I, I like Strobe a little bit in there, but full disclosure, I have a personal affection for Strobe because his damn flashing was the last grade one winner of my career. I hope it's on the wall, that picture. I, I have actually have in my office in the barn. Okay. Yeah. Five to two favorites, so Lib, as they make their way to the gate, and Mott's Philly um, having a moment. Well, Mott's having quite a moment himself right now. I mean, this is the first time you think back to, you know, just to pick back up on that, probably 11 or 12 years ago, he was talking about when he had a barn this loaded with this kind of talent, when he had Royal Delta, flat out, Ron the Greek, to honor and serve Drosselmeyer. He's having another one of those moments right now. Yeah, no doubt. Um, it's going to be interesting later on, too. you got Cody's Wish, which... You know, I think, uh, you know, I've fallen in love with the story, but I've become such a big fan of the horse because he's just. Hi, my name is Roberto Rosa, and I'm an ambassador for Great Jones Bourbon. We're using a New York bourbon for a New York race and produced right in Manhattan. It is the first legal whiskey distillery since Prohibition. Today, we'll be preparing the Belmont Jewel, the official drink of the Belmont race. Two ounces of bourbon, some lemonade, some pomegranate juice. Top it off with some ice and a lemon garnish. And here you have the Belmont Jewel. You want one? And now I'm gonna stick with water. I, it's gonna be a long day still. <laughs> Looks incredibly refreshing. Hope uh, fans will be enjoying a lot of those this afternoon. We've got a long day ahead of us. You know, Mike Rapoli was kidding about who the, uh, maybe the degenerates or the true fans are. Pace yourself if you are here throughout that afternoon. Uh, no no doubt. I mean, I was walking up to the tunnel about 9 o'clock. You were already in the office. So. Energized, ready to go. We had an early start this morning. Here's what's ahead. True North in this sprint division. It's a very important race in the sprint division. Of course, we have the champ back. Last year's Breeders' Cup sprint winner who has maybe gotten even better as a five-year-old if that performance in Riyadh is anything to prove to that point, biggest number he has ever run in his career. And of course, the Met Mile to come, we're another Belmont runner. He has elite power and he has Cody's wish. He'll line up in the Met Mile, still ahead in that one. That Met Mile, as you said, stallion making race. Take a look by the numbers with the Met Mile. First run in 1891 at Morris Park race course. Fastest time, what a performance. We all remember from Frosted in 2016. 14 and a quarter length domination. Sub 133 for that performance. Most wins by a trainer and owner, Green Tree Trable. John Gaffer Sr. spanning from 1940 to 1963 with those six victories. The great Johnny V, five wins in this race. His last coming in that 2014 performance. How about all the champions that have come out of this race? It has been a champion-making race, no question. Four champion three-year-olds, five champion sprinters, champion female as well. Horse of the year 13 times, including criminal type back in 1990. Flight line, of course, last year. And our first chance to see him in New York. And racing Hall of Famers that have come out of the Met Mile, 18 in all. It is an incredibly important race to create champions, Hall of Famers, and we may have a couple that come out of the race this year. Yeah, especially, you know, as, as consistent as Cody's wish. And it's just a really, every year, it's an exciting, solid race. That performance by Frosted, that was jaw-dropping. I mean, he, he was as impressive that day as, as he, I mean, the best race of his life. a mini version of what Secretariat had done in, in the Belmont back in 1973. The, the eight furlong uh, <laughs> version uh, instead of the 12 furlong version. Well, 
Cody's wish, I mean, what a role this horse is on. He's won five in a row, three consecutive grade one victories. And to me, that performance for him coming back off the bench in that Churchill Downs on Derby Day to just inhale that field, that was something special. It really was. And I think you used the right words there. Inhaled the field. Even in the chart, it says blue pass circled in hand. Take a look at what he did in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And able to outlast Cyberknife, slow down Andy, who will be in the race again today. But he has just gone to a different level as a runner. Eight for 12 lifetime, as reliable a runner on the big grand stage there is. And of course, that great story, that connection he has with Cody Dorman. Yeah, I mean, the story's incredible. The horse is incredible. And what made this race even more impressive, obviously a Breeders' Cup race impressive under any circumstances, the first time that he ever won around two turns, a mild contested around two turns at Keeneland, he's been so solid at one turn, and he gets back to that one turn today, just like he did last time in the Churchill Downs, going seven furlongs. Special horse. Bill Mott with a real good one, Junior Alvarado. If you look at any chinks in the armor today, are you concerned about this inside post? Well, I think it's always a bit of a concern. And, you know, the one of the things, listen, he's a seasoned older horse. But there's a lot of empty space here inside. You always got to be on guard for a horse kind of running towards that empty space. Junior Alvarado's going to have to have his attention, get him going forward. He's a closing type, but you still don't want to give anybody head starts. And he's going to have a target on his back, no question. Meanwhile, Repo Rocks, Sandin. They met in the grade three Westchester and Repo Rocks. Wow, he has just become a different horse under Jamie Ness. Yeah, I mean, he's run races that uh, you know he, we had never seen previous, but he's been very good. The Westchester was strong. One thing that you've got to be aware of if you're, let's say, Junior Alvarado on Cody's Wish, Repo Rocks drifts. He wants to drift right. He was better with the addition of, uh, you know, he had an extension blinker last time on the outside, but he's still going to drift. He's your safety valve. If you can't work your way to the outside, you're going to be able to get through on him. He's going to clear a space for you. Meanwhile, charge it. This was last year. So this was in the Dwyer for Tom Fletcher. He ran in the Kentucky Derby, did not run well after a runner-up finish in the Florida Derby. This performance was the coming out party, and everyone who saw it thought this is maybe horse racing's next superstar. It hasn't materialized. No, I mean, obviously, he went to the shelf after this. He came back with a nice return. His other two races were good. They weren't as good. But he gets back to the scene of his greatest effort in the Dwyer here last year. 111 buyer figure, dominated, 23-length win. He runs the Dwyer back. Cody's wish is going to have his running shoes on to beat him. I mean, th 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 that was a big performance. Can he reproduce that electrifying performance in that Dwyer from last year? Everyone wants to know if he can still do it. Obviously, it's in him, but he went to the bench with an injury. Maybe not quite the same horse. He's run very good, but not up to that level. It's a very exciting race. And even Zandon, who was that runner-up second-place finisher to Repo Rocks, that was his first start back of his four-year-old campaign. He could move forward off that for Chad Brown. Cannot wait for that Met Mile every year. This is just an exceptional race, and, and this year no different. It's where routers turn back, sprinters stretch out, and two worlds collide. Coming up next, kicking off graded stakes action on this Belmont Stakes Day card, and there is the Breeders' Cup and Sprint champion from last year, Elite power for Bill Mott. Arad Ortiz Jr. will ride. He's the odds on favorite. We'll get to the true north when we come back. Flight line is in full flight. Flight line turns it on at the top of the stretch, and he's in cruise control. And flight line takes off. Take a good look at this, because you're not going to see this too often. Maybe never again. Flight line, 20 lengths clear. World-class racehorse, world-class performance, and a world championship event. Monmouth Park's newest featured race day is Haskell Preview Day, Saturday, June 17th. Wager on the TVG.com Pegasus for three-year-olds, plus three graded stakes all on the road to Haskell Day, Saturday, July 22nd. Play into big pools all day long, starting with a 12:40 first post. Racing's biggest stars prep for the Jersey Shore's biggest race on Haskell Preview Day at Monmouth Park Racetrack. The rumbling started early and only intensified. 
with performances that sent shockwaves across the nation. The center of it all. Epicenter is at the top of the three-year-old class in the Run Happy Travers. Epicenter, three-year-old champion by not this time. Cool More America, home of champions. Race to Twin Spires, where you can take advantage of our $200 new player offer right now. Register with code GET200 to start earning your bonus of up to $200 with Twin Spires where you can watch and bet on the best racing from across the globe. Plus, you can check out our expert picks and weekly promotions. Fast and secure online betting with Twin Spires. Download the app and bet now. Richter scale at the inside and they head for home together with the Trafalgar just in behind and Johnny Legit coming into the final furlong. Kelly Kipp and Richter scale. They've been head to head now all the way and it is Richter scale prevailing. Richter scale has got a short lead. Kelly Kipp is second. Trafalgar third on the outside under the line. It's Richter scale. The winner by length. 1998 True North and Richter Scale, what a runner he was with a big performance for Belmont. Yeah, beating uh, Kelly Kipp here under Jean-Luc Samin, Jerry Bailey on Richter Scale this day. Richter Scale is a horse I got to ride later in his career. Best pure sprinter I ever rode in my life. He had an intensity. Look at the way he pins his ears. He was a horse that did not want to get past. Travalga comes along, I believe with our colleague, Gary Stevens aboard. How about that? Richter scale, 1998, the last win in this race for Vermont, Lion Cavern Diablo. So he's trying to collect a fourth victory in the True North with an odds-on favorite, the reigning sprint champion, trying to get it done for him in elite power, who has been just brilliant of late. We talked about that loaded lineup of stars Vermont has right now. It is just incredible, the run he has been on, really, for about the last six months. Yeah, very, you know, bench strength. He has bench strength. Horses uh, covering several different divisions. And, and Bill Mott has done well with all kinds of horses over the years. He has uh, elite power most recently up at his uh, Saratoga training base. Bill goes up there himself as soon as they open for training. He's got a beautiful setup up there. His office, his barn is set up so nicely. And horses do so well there. But how about this finish from elite power? Just a... I love closing sprinters, but he's also tactical. A horse that can lay up closer if the pace doesn't develop as fast as they need it to be. How about Mont having two horses in his barn who beat the great Jackie's Warrior in sprint races last year? This, of course, one of them. Let's get a paddock report and go to Michelle. Well, guys, on paper, I think that this race certainly runs through elite power. But taking a look at him in the paddock, it gives me kind of a pause, a little bit of a concern here. He is getting really warm. And as we've been talking about, the weather here is pretty perfect today. Not another horse in this paddock has turned a hair. And he has lather dripping out from between his back legs. He's not acting up, but he's certainly sweating out. Also, the entire time he's been saddled and until he started to walk right now, he's been shaking his head pretty aggressively. I don't feel any gnats around, which could be something, but I feel like there's something bugging him right now. So he is certainly one that I'm going to be watching on the warm up to see if his focus goes from shaking his head and worrying to, hey, I've got a job ahead of me. From a fitness standpoint and whatnot, though, he does look like he's coming in here with really good condition after his trip to Saudi. Also, looking at the three, I thought he made a fantastic appearance in here for trainer Doug O'Neill. He's been facing some really good horses over at Santa Anita, and he has not turned a hair since coming into this paddock. He looks tremendously well turned out. And there's Anarchist. Thank you, Michelle, with Joel Rosario getting a leg up. He'll move from synthetic back to dirt for trainer Doug O'Neill. As we get set for the grade two true north to come here, the first of nine. Graded stakes on our program, still six grade ones ahead. And you can play it all with Naira Betts. That $25 free play in the Belmont, $200 sign up bonus. That's the code to use at sign up, Belmont25 at NairaBets.com. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Elite Power moving on by right behind us here. Three to five on the board as they get set to make their way through the tunnel with our post parade to come.
as we look at synthesis there, a long shot for David Jacobson. This horse ran 104 buyer last time out, and this horse is 26 to 1 on the board. I think that speaks volumes to the depth of this field, right? You have a horse that ran that big last time, uh, and particularly here at Belmont Park, and basically getting overlooked at the windows. So elite power. There he is again. Just an incredible run. He has been on six wins from nine career starts off since February. And it seems like those days are gone when you do that international travel. And it, it, it used to be, oh, that can really take something out of you. It seems like trainers have figured that out now. Yeah, it really does. Uh, trainers have figured out the formula, how to get their horses back in shape, give them just enough time, let them rest up, rehydrate, get over a long, arduous journey. Um, and listen, Bill Mott was one of the first to do it successfully with Cigar shipping over for the uh, Dubai World Cup, the inaugural running. Call to post coming up as they're about to emerge trackside. For our post parade here, approaching the five-minute mark to post here for our first graded stakes action of the afternoon. Grade two, True North. We begin with a very talented New York bred. Today's flavor could be setting the pace in the race. Fast speed from the inside. Manny Franco certainly simplifies things. Got to take advantage of that speed and protect his inside position. Today's flavor, very talented. There's the horse at that huge number we were just talking about. That big win, it came here at Belmont for synthesis. Yeah, I mean, huge race there. Got a perfect setup, but he might sit a very similar trip today. Anarchist, he's 12 to 1. He's never won on a fast dirt surface. Doug O'Neill trains. Yeah, depending on what Joel Rosario wants to do, Anarchist certainly could be a pace player here, part of that pace. Here's the reigning Breeders' Cup sprint and sprint champion, elite power for Belmont. Big, robust chestnut son of Curlin. Curlin certainly stamps his offspring. What an incredible sire. Elite power, your only chestnut in the race. Deserving favorite. Strobe for trainer Brad Cox. He had won back-to-back -back starts before meeting with the incredibly fast Skelly where he was runner-up. I, I like Strobe a lot. I think he's going to get a good trip. He showed a different dimension rating last time. I think the way the, set, the race sets up, speed to his inside, he's going to be in a perfect stalking position. And Fearless, this most puzzling horse on today's card. Everyone asking why who a horse has been going a mile and a half is cutting back to sprinting here six and a half furlongs. Well, listen, he's been very proficient at, at uh, a mile distance, and I'm not going to question Todd Pletcher. He's already put together a Hall of Fame resume that got him inducted a few years ago, and if he feels like this is the best move for this horse, who am I to argue? 14 to 1 right now, and a very curious move for this 7-year-old with a major change in what he is going to be doing. He would have been one of the contenders in that marathon race later today. Yeah, he certainly would have, but he is also coming off of a layoff, and he's got sharp work. So Todd's not a trainer that works his horses fast. So this horse going five furlongs in a minute, comes back 101, another minute and change. That tells me he's just very happy with how sharp this horse is. Oh, this is an interesting New York bred here for George Weaver. Today's flavor, he reeled off four consecutive wins in a row, tried grade one company where he set the pace, backed up to fourth. And then he got back in against New York Red Company, Stakes Company, and he was back to his dominant self. Yeah, I mean, he, his first start back in September in New York completely blew the break. Every race since then has been terrific. Probably didn't want the full seven eights against that company that day in the Carter, but I think obviously he's quick, speed's always dangerous, and he's an ultra consistent sort. Five wins his last six starts. The only blip that grade one is he up to the task of open company in a grade two. Let's go to Michelle Yu. Thanks, Greg. I'm joined by George Weaver, who does saddle today's flavor. We know he has an affinity for Aqueduct. He's worked here at Belmont. Do you think he's going to be able to translate that form? He should. I mean, I think he's going to like the track. He's a fast horse. I think he'd run fast anywhere he goes. And tell me a little bit about his effort in the Carter, because even though it was fourth, it was not beaten by very much. No, he ran. He did all the running from the, from the rail, and... Um, you know, it's half for a long shorter today. We got the rail again, unfortunately, but, you know, he's kind of got his style, so he's doing really well. Looking forward to seeing him run. Later on today in the Phipps, you have past the Champagne coming out of a blowout win in the Ruffian last time. What is it about one turn that just makes her so effective there? Well, I think she likes one. She's run well around two turns. She was second in Ashland. I, I think she really liked this track. I always wanted to run her over it, and it just never happened until so we ran in the Ruffian. But, um... You know, I, I think just tinkering around with their style, and she likes the big turn here, and, you know, 
she definitely deserves a shot. It's a tough race, but she deserves a shot against these today. How have you kept her so happy and consistent over a three-year campaign? Well, you know, she's always been a happy horse. She's um, and she eats well. She, you know, she looks good. We had a little trouble keeping her sound there for a while, but now she's in a good groove and put some good races together. So we're looking forward to it. Appreciate the time. Best of luck. Thank you. George Weaver has one here, and then we'll see him later on today, guys, with Pass the Champagne. Yeah, Michelle, thank you. Pass the Champagne overlooked in that great two ruffian last time out. And don't forget her in that loaded group that includes that big rematch with Clear Air and Secret Oath. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, George just said something that I think people need to understand. You know, getting horses sound, getting them healthy. They're athletes. They get little bumps and bruises and nicks. Th nothing serious, nothing, you know, catastrophic, but things that need to be managed like other athletes have to manage certain little ailments. And, and when you get a horse that's good and showing you in their training that they're happy and sound and enthusiastic about their job, your best horses really love what they're doing. And today's flavor has the rail, maybe the quickest in this race. We'll see if she can, he, sorry, can take advantage of that speed with Manny Franco as we take a look here at Strobe, who would put together those two really big efforts at fairgrounds and faced a good one at Skelly last time out in his debut in graded stakes competition. Yeah, and this was a, a departure from his normal style, a horse that has shown very high speed in all of his starts, was a little further back, came with a run, just couldn't reel in uh, the winner. But I thought this was an effort that showed that he doesn't need that particular trip. And I think he's going to get a good stalking trip from the outside. Again, full disclosure, I, I'm a fan of this horse because I'm familiar with the family. Flashing was a horse I worked with closely. Working her out in the mornings could be very rank. Won the test on her, my last grade one in Saratoga. And then the Gazelle, when it was still a grade one at Aqueduct, the last one of my career. So, of course, I'm going to pull for this horse. It should be mentioned, too, this horse actually easily handled elite power in his debut strobe's debut that is he won by four and a half lengths elite power was third that day obviously elite power has become a totally different horse since that time well elite power was still a work in progress at that point i think strobe was you know precocious from the from the jump right right, right from the start where elite power kind of had to figure the game out but he's figured it out in a big way. Yes, he has. Michelle talked about those concerns with the sprint champ. There he is in the paddock. How's he doing now, Michelle? Well, Greg, I will report that he has really opened up his focus since coming out of the track. In fact, once the rider got on, really, he stopped swishing his head around so much, and I thought his warm-up looked really good. I talked to a couple people that were in Saudi when I was there because I didn't recall him being perfect, but I also didn't recall him being as washy as he is here, and they kind of uh, second my sent my sentiments there saying that yeah there was something about him that you know this might be his normal mo to be just a hair on the uh inside outside but like i said in the paddock i cannot get away from the three anarchists in here for doug o'neill coming in off of a win up at woodbine he comes back to dirt um i know that he's over two at this particular distance but he's being beaten by some of the best horses in california he ran second to spirit mckenna who would go on to win back-to-back -back graded stakes impressively he's probably the best sprinter in southern california right now and then most recently he ran second in the kona gold to brickyard ride who is the fastest calibre that we have. I mean, he's he's consistently putting up 43, 44 and change half miles. So we know that there's a really good horse finishing in front of him in both of those instances. I'm not saying he can turn the tables on uh, elite power here, but I'm certainly playing him in, in any ticket that I use. Michelle, thank you. Intrigued for our first graded stake of this Saturday card coming up, four to five on elite power. And already, great crowd on hand to see the action this afternoon. It's only going to get bigger and bigger as we work our way to the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, you feel that every year. It kind of builds up like a crescendo. And by 2 o'clock, it'll really start to fill up. And the excitement level's there. I see they had your helicopter parked in the infield there. You'd be a good captain of that ship. Be nice to have one to take me up to back home to the farm, Millbrook. Be nice going up the Hudson Valley in oh, a helicopter, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, some great views. Three to five again on this guy right here. Elite power who all signs point to him. I mean, he's you win the championship, you win the Breeders' Cup Sprint, you come back the way he did, and you're the odds-on favorite to repeat, and he certainly looks like he is on that path right now. It's just so interesting to look at his past performances, Greg. He, you know, a horse that took 
three starts to kind of sort his way through it, figure the game out. And I think it's good for people to understand these horses. Some, some are like uh, immature kids, right? They go to school. They have a little bit more of a, a, a hard time just getting comfortable and acclimating. But then they come on. And, and maybe your best athlete in high school, starting high school, isn't the best coming out of high school. Elite power was a work in progress. But, boy, when the light bulb went on, that proverbial light bulb, went on in a big way. I Meanwhile, for Strobe, the five, I mean, he is very, very quick. We didn't see that quickness from him last time out. He's still running very good against uh, Skelly, who's maybe a little too quick for him. There's no Skellies in here, though. No, no Skellies in here, and I do think he's going to set up shop just outside of him. And, listen, always a little gamesmanship. He's going to be aware el where Elite Power is at. Breeders' Cup sprint champ, Elite Power, the four horse, in the grade two True North to kick off our graded stakes action. Let's go to John Imbriel. And uh, they're off. And Strobe is going out for the lead with today's flavor. Today's flavor now takes over. Strobe is racing in second. Anarchist next in third. The big favorite, Elite Power, sits in fourth. Followed by Synthesis. And Fearless is the trailer in sixth. Today's flavor leads here by a length. Strobe in pursuit in second. And then it's the trio of Anarchist. Synthesis. Oh, Synthesis had a steady there down on the inside as Elite Power moves on past. The quarter went in 23 and one fifth seconds as the field goes around the far turn. Today's flavor leading here by a half length. Strobe is getting closer now on the outside. Anarchist is down at the rail in third. Elite Power is fourth, three lengths from the front. Then comes Synthesis, and farther back is Fearless. And now they're moving for the quarter pole, and it is Strobe who's right alongside of today's flavor as Elite Power now gets in gear on the outside. Anarchist is in fourth, and here comes Elite Power, and he powers to the front now. Elite Power in front past the furlong marker. It's Elite Power by three lengths. Anarchist now moving into second. It is Elite Power, and the winning streak is at seven as he takes the grade two True North Stakes. Elite Power, a champion sprinter. Seven in a row, as you heard from John Imbrial, and 1.15 and three. That is a sharp final time. He might be better as a five-year-old. It looked like he was off the bridle around the far turn. And then when uh, Irad Ortiz kind of put the bit bridle into his mouth, the bit into his mouth and asked him, he inhaled Strobe. It looked like he was just galloping along in position. Anikris made a nice run. There was some traffic. It really affected the two um, uh, uh, synthesis the most. But what an effort. And this horse just, he inhaled very good horses very easily. Yeah, that's a big takeaway from this performance in here. Just how easily he did it. Seven for ten lifetime now for this son of a two-time horse of the year, Curlin. And there's no question who is the leader of this sprint division. Man, he's got a stranglehold on it the way he ran. Listen, he hasn't run since February shipping back. What, what a nice effort. Good time to be Hall of Famer Bill Mott with the loaded lineup of stars he has in his stable. Let's go to Michelle. Thanks, guys. Walking right now with Bill, and I told him I was going to be stalking him, but he said that's all about. <laughs> yeah, love it. Tell us a little bit about this run and what you thought. It was a good race. I mean, he had a good stalking position, and he looped the field, and, and you know, looked like he won well enough. I was, I was pleased with the race. You told me yesterday that he's not a horse that gets an ultra a lot out of his work so he's a little bit on the lazy side were you expecting him to be this ready today well i felt he was this ready for this race uh you know i i felt we had him as ready as we did when we went to riyadh and uh you know six and a half furlongs i mean you know a little easier than getting him ready for a mile you know particularly with his his nature i mean he's very laid back and you know his works are just they're workmanlike but not you know, he's not a horse that goes out there and drags you around there galloping. I mean, he just, he gallops around and does what he has to do, but that's about it. So, you know, I think he was ready for we, for the race we had him in today. Seven in a row, Bill. That's pretty tremendous. Well, it it's hard to win two in a row sometimes, and, you know, but the, they've got to be a, a very good horse to continue, you know, uh, a run like that. Congratulations. Thank you. Bill Ma, exuberant down here, guys.
Well, Michelle brought up the streak. We heard it from John Imbriao as well, the man who has probably the most famous win streak in the history of this sport with Cigar. He's got two champions on incredible streaks of their own right now. I think Bill being somewhat modest. I mean, obviously you take good horses, but it takes superior horsemanship to keep a horse in that form for that length of time, to, to have them be able to string together those victories. At the highest level as well. 4-3, 5-1 finish. Well, he's got another one on a big streak to come in the Met Mile. The favorite in that race, Cody's Wish, who we'll see later on this afternoon. What a performance, though, from our sprint champion here. To win for the seventh time in 10 career starts, and no one giving this horse any competition in this race. Yeah, what's interesting about him, too, being a son of Curlin, right? Curlin gets horses with stamina. He also gets horses with speed. What an incredible sire, and this horse just superior sprinter. It'll be interesting to see when he and Cody's wish at some point are probably going to have to face off against each other. You think so? I, I think it's inevitable, isn't it? They're both that like one turn up to a mile type. I, I got to think at some point. I think I think everyone wants to see it. I would I, love I, that. I, I'm sure Bill wants to keep them separated. He, he's <laughs> the one person who does not want to see it. <laughs> And probably the owners as well. Wow, that would be fun for the game, though, wouldn't it? Our, our winner circle lead-in brought to you by the Fasic Tipton July sales of selected yearlings and horses of racing age, July 10th and 11th in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? Elite Tower, seventh time getting his picture taken. And seventh time in a row. It took him four starts to finally break his maiden, including Strobe, who he beat today, handling him in a maiden win since he broke his maiden. That was back at Churchill Downs, June of last year. He has not lost. I think it actually helps horses to not win their first start. It helps them run against maidens, gain more experience, and build into it. I think you can get better horses when you don't put them under that kind of pressure to win first time. Still to come, 155th edition of the Belmont Stakes. And Jenna Antonucci bringing the Peter Pan winner, Arcangelo, who ran huge in that performance, trying to pull off. At Peter Pan Belmont Double. She joins us next. Colonial Affair appears there on the outside, and Colonial Affair and Julie Crone riding for her life now as they come down toward the final furlong here in the Belmont. Wild Gale is there, kissing Chris, 
with a late one on the extreme outside, and they're coming down to the wire and Colonial Affair. Julie Crone, the first woman to win the Belmont. She wins by two. As Julie Crone making history on Colonial Affair, first female rider to break through in a triple crown event. What a performance. And we have a guest with us on set right now trying to make history as well, trying to become the first female trainer to win the test of the champion, Jenna Antonucci. So great to have you on set. Thanks for making time Thank on you. a very big day. Archangelo, of course, going in the Belmont Stakes for you. Before we get to anything, first you have to just tell us what Archangelo is doing right now. He's sleeping. He is sleeping. <laughs> I love this guy. He's That's sound great. asleep. He's in a pile on the stall on the floor right now, snoring away. What time do you think you might wake him up and tell him he's got some work to do? Eh, you know, right before post time. Right before post time. <laughs> you, know. but you, I had read, got started with horses, actually riding horses. How is this even possible? At three years old? I realize it's very unhealthy. Probably not a best parenting decision my parents ever made, but hey, here we are all these years later. My son could barely walk, and he's two and a half. You just have to hang on. <laughs> Half this guy. Yeah, <laughs> piece of main, right? Stay, keep That's your right. mind in the middle. That's right. Uh, Jenna, mm -hmm. uh, obviously this horse has taken a step forward in every race, and he came out of obviously the Peter Pan in good order. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that another step forward from him? We do. We would be shocked not to see him come forward, and he's doing been doing great and is happy and flourishing. So we would be shocked if he didn't come forward. More. It seemed like I was on on the air for the race that day in the Peter Pan. You were, like nice. you were nice to us that day. I was. I'm always yeah. nice to you. <laughs> I try to be anyway. Everyone seemed to know he was going to run this huge race. I didn't know. But did you know he was going to run? Did you know he had that kind of talent? We knew what he ran in the maiden was real. We knew what he had done. Um, and leading up to that, he had some trouble trips. And he, we learned a lot about him through those trouble trips, which could have almost been allowance type level races through those adversities that he had handled. So we were expecting him to come through and, and run again for He's a competitive horse. He loves his job. Javier learned a lot that day. When you were watching this stretch duel, I mean, what was going through your mind? He looks beat here. Um, I agree with you until we watch the head on. And when we watch the head on back, Javier was really trying to learn him more and teach him a little bit more, getting down eye to eye with the other horses and really getting that grit and that battle in him. And so Javier had no doubt. And we thanked him afterwards for literally giving all of us a heart attack. So he <laughs> had no doubt, not that we had doubt, but to watch a horse persevere, as you know, deep stretch, eye to eye like that, the horse has to want that. Well, especially what's unusual is the other horse looked like he got away from about mm -hmm. a neck. And mm -hmm. at that stage of the game, most horses will mm -hmm. cave to the other horse's will. The fact that he reasserted himself into that, that's what stood out to me. That yeah. A special quality in a horse. But you pointed out after the race, too, Bishop's Bay blinked. And he did. I think um, Archangelo and Javier, I give Javier a ton of credit for this, they maximized on that. Um, I don't think we're going to see that today, being honest. You know, we're going to not worry about teaching him today. We're about winning a race today. Well, in the mile and a half, obviously a question for everybody, but the way he strides, his pedigree, mm -hmm. being out of a tap at Mare, Arrogate, and the fact that he's so laid back really speaks well for him to get the mile and a half. It does, and um, I think one of the hidden factors that he really has in all this is the fact that he is has that Arrogate speed and that turn of foot that we're so unfortunately not gonna have further past these crops, but I think obviously all the bottom side that he has little sprinkle on top of some stamina and speed from Airgate, and we're super blessed to be here. Talk about how you brought this horse along. I believe a little bit later in the, on the full side of May full, and you had to be very patient with him, didn't you? We did, and it's he was a sum of a lot of parts. May full, Airgate, tap it, bridled song stuff in there. You have everything that tells you I need to be an older kind of guy. And so just being patient with him, letting him get it all together, and not just physically, but also mentally. More than anything else, he's just been an immature kid finding all the parts, and I think he thinks all this stuff is pretty fun, and he knows where a camera is, so he likes the camera <laughs> a lot in the winter circle. <laughs> Did a lot of growing up in, in that yes. Peter Pan victory. Talk about your kind of evolution in this game. You spent a lot of time, I know, with D. Wayne Lucas, but also a really neat history as an equine veterinary assistant. How did that help you become a better trainer? I think you, you know, riding for so long, it's so much feel. And so a lot of times, you know, you can watch a horse and you know what the rider may be feeling. And so taking that step forward then, it's like, okay, now that I understand everything that I'm feeling, let's break it down to a biomechanical level. How do we help these horses? How do we improve them? How do we prevent things from happening? And so really taking all that into effect and really just trying to find a balance with it all has been, 
you know, kind of the evolution of it all. And we get to play with a lot of mares and babies and young horses. And so watching these young horses grow and you teach them and you kind of get to get your first hands on them and hope that they're, uh, you know, on the right track is, is pretty remarkable. You're also very passionate and committed to thoroughbred aftercare Absolutely. And, and what happens to them when their racing careers Absolutely. are over. Talk a little bit about that. I, you know, it's kind of what we lead with. You know, mm -hmm. it's, we've said, excuse me, we've said for a long time, it's, it's not what happens, you know, before the wire, it's what happens after the wire. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we always take that approach of it is as important, if not more so, to make sure we are stewarding them after they have crossed that finish wire for the final time in their career. Are we always going to get it perfect? No, but we're going to try darn hard to do so and make sure that we are speaking for them and being their best advocate. I applaud that. It's incumbent upon everybody within the industry to make sure these horses have a safe, soft landing Absolutely. when their racing careers are over. Absolutely. It's paramount. Yeah, that's obviously the, the most important thing. But it, Great to see the performances we have, but taking care of our horses. We talk about a lot with all these yeah. organizations. Yeah. That's what matters most. But for you, are you gonna, have you taken some time to reflect as well? Just the fact that you've arrived here and you're in a major triple crown race. I'm not. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Quite plainly, we're we're trying to be present and really enjoy the day. Um, now that we're kind of in that cruise mode, waiting to. Uh, get ready for the race later on and walk over to the assembly barn, try and go eat a little bit and, you know, enjoy all the amazing stuff that Naira and everyone at Naira has put on and, and all the production crews and everybody has worked so hard to put this show on for America and for everybody else. Has, so. has the entourage has got a little bit bigger with a horse in the Belmont? Um, I've gotten a lot of texts. <laughs> 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 that has happened. But again, I'm so grateful for everyone's well wishes and positive vibes, and we will absolutely embrace that. We appreciate you taking the time Thank on you. a big day for you and Thank you. continued success. It's been a joy to watch with, with your rise and with this horse as we well. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yes. Good luck. Thanks, Richard. Archangelo lining up in the 155th edition of the Belmont Stakes for Jenna Antonucci, trying to become the first female trainer in the history of this race to win it. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk more Belmont Stakes. And, of course, it will be seen live on Fox for the first time ever later today, 7.02 Eastern start time for the big one. Luis Saez looking for another Belmont victory. Broke through with essential quality. Going to get another one. We'll be back. Stay with us. Two seventy-five, medium two hundred seventy-five thousand. Seventy-five, but to get seventy-five, two hundred seventy-five thousand. Two hundred fifty, I'm Ralph now, two hundred fifty thousand. Able to get two, but two, but two hundred thousand dollar. By in July. The Phasic tipped in July selected yearling sale. The first major yearling sale of the year. Ranked number one by percentage of stakes winners, stakes horses, and two-year-old winners. The July sale is also among the nation's top sources of graded stakes winners. Recent star graduates include grade one winners Faza and Chocolate Gelato, plus this growing list of graded stakes winners. The Fazig Tipton July sale of selected yearlings, Tuesday, July 11th in Lexington, Kentucky. Where will you be? Precocity. Strategic speed. Some speed at two, but can carry it on through their later careers. Improbable, full of run. Improbable, now a grade one winner. It is a complete runaway, an authoritative run. It's improbable to win the Whitney. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race. from every track, every track, on every screen, every, screen. Every, day. every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Back with you on America's Day of the Races on Belmont Stakes Day here in Queens, New York. It's brought to you in part by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual. Unusually well, that crowd getting bigger and bigger as the better races. We 
we get closer to. And this is a look at Trusted Company, the great secretariat's oldest living offspring, 34 years old and Bright Futures Farm in Pennsylvania. That, that's just incredible. And you can see he got the chestnut and the white chrome from his sire, his older horse, a bit of a sway in his back. And for people at home, horses 34 years old is very old for a horse. A lot of what happens, Greg, is their teeth wear down and then they can't eat and digest properly, right? It begins with them chewing, being able to chew their hay, get their roughage. So having a horse that can, you know, overcome that and continue. I mean, we have, we have a 32-year-old at home and we've got to give her, you know, dehydrated alfalfa and you make mashes so that they can actually eat properly. It's, it's, it's difficult, but congratulations to those people and thank you for having, uh, giving this horse such good care yeah, that he's still absolutely. around, 34 years old. Well, we talked about going to break, Luis Saez, and that breakthrough performance for him in a Triple Crown event. That, of course, with that throwdown with Hot Rod Charlie and essential quality and that victory for Saez. Many people believe he is on the one to beat in this year's edition of the Belmont Stakes with Tap and Trice. Broke a little better in the bluegrass, still not sharp. He's not sharp away from the gate. You can see Louis got to ride him, right? When we talk about bicycle horse, you're not pedaling, he's not running. Gets in tight into the first turn. And look how he extricated himself from some tight quarters here. Not an easy thing to do. And then to find his stride immediately. And then Louis angles him out to the clear because he's a horse that doesn't like to run through the kickback. He's better on the outside. He's got an inside draw today. And I think he'll save ground the first turn. He's got plenty of time to work his way out down the backstretch. This bluegrass, he made a long, extended run. He put him in the game starting about the five furlong pole five-eighths of a mile from home, and he continued. I think a mile and a half suits him. The pedigree, the right trainer. Louis Sai has already got a Belmont on another gray horse, and no horse has trained better than Tappet Trice into this Belmont stage. He's cruising through the stretch here, just galloping along. I love the mechanics of his stride. He's got an impeccable way of going. But what impresses me, watch as they get to the wire. Watch the rider's range back on his withers. He's just going to kind of shake the reins at him slightly, right in there. Look at the way he leveled off, dropped his head about another four or five inches, reached out over the ground. His gallop out was as impressive a gallop out as you're ever going to see. And this is when this horse, and we've seen it in several of his wins and dominating performances, when he's at his best, when he can get into that comfortable rhythm and let that stride show itself. He was not able to do that in the Kentucky Derby. Most of, most of the reason, just because he's kind of packed inside of horses. Better opportunity at this racetrack and with a smaller field for him to get outside and get that clear running room? Well, think about how the Kentucky Derby's run. It's always too fast to pace for the distance. This year they went 45 and change. Kickback comes back harder. You, bigger field, 18 horses this year with the scratches. He just never was able to get into that comfortable place that he can find that rhythm. The Belmont Stakes, what, what, how fast are they going to go the half? Even if they go 47 and change, that's 12 lengths slower than they ran the Kentucky Derby. I think they may even go 48. He's not going to be as far back. He's going to be able to get in the clear, get into the rhythm, and use his stride. He is a true stayer. That's my strongest opinion all day. Tap it trice to me. I, I believe he is the most likely winner of the Belmont Stakes. We both thought there was a good chance he could go off favorite in this race. Right now, it's not looking like, like that is the case. We'll see as we get closer to post time. There is quite a bit of money in that pool already. His sire, of course, one of the major reasons people are so high on him. Tappet has had tremendous recent success, beginning with Tonalist back in 2014 in the Belmont. Well, I love the fact that Tappet gets all kinds of runners. They're good on turf. They're good going shorter. They're good going a mile and a half. And his pedigree, it brings out that stamina influence in the breed. And I don't know when stamina became less important in the American thoroughbred, but I still believe it's important, and Tappet certainly fits that bill. Pretty good trainer in his corner as well. I, I, listen, Todd Pletcher knows how to get horses prepared for the mile and a half, and it starts as two-year-olds laying the foundation. You can have a beautiful house. If it's built on a bad foundation, you're going to have problems. Fourth race at Belmont. Seven furlongs. We're on the main track in this first level allowance race. Coming up, let's go to Michelle. Greg, taking a look at these 
boys in the paddock here. I thought the six just time and time again made the best appearance in this particular spot. I didn't use this horse on paper just because I wasn't sure how he was going to fit in over here. Um, but from a look standpoint, could not fault him. He has a couple things that I'm looking for when I'm looking for the horse that looks the best. First of all, it's the dapples, so the brighter colored spots on their coat. Second thing I'm always looking for is the fitness line. It's almost like a six pack on their belly. And this horse is just ripped right now walking and watch over here. And I love the way that he's just carrying himself. You guys know it's a big busy day. There are bands playing just right outside the paddock. There's a gazillion people and this horse has not turned a hair the entire time. He's been just a consummate pro and considering he only has four starts under his belt and they've all been at the same track and it wasn't here. I just think he's handling things so well. So really liked the six bouncer and the seven life changer made a good appearance in here as well. He's been the picture of consistency for John Terranova hitting the board in pretty much every start in the last almost two years. I mean, he's just a, a cool guy that picks up a lot of checks. He doesn't win as much as maybe you would hope that he does, um, but I can't fault him for his attitude or the way he looks in here. Michelle, thank you. Approaching the eight minute mark to post here for this fourth at Belmont, which kicks off yet another pick four. Five to two favorite. Life changer, John Terranova, six-year-old, who is a three for 15 son of Oxbow, trying to get another win here. It seems like Joel Rosario with life changer can have this horse wherever he wants him. Yeah, I think there's a couple of speeds inside of him. I think he's sitting the perfect kind of trip stalking. This is a look at a meeting with American law on a muddy seal track on April 1st. Uh, yeah, and, and listen, he, he ran well this day. I think he was at a little bit of a disadvantage. He's trying to rally down inside on a track that, uh, you know, to me was, wasn't was playing as kind to inside runners. And then also running through the kickback. Look at right there, where he had to take up over heels to get out to the clear. And then it sounds like, feels like he found his best stride uh, once he got to the clear. Now the way he's posted today, seven, you know, uh, uh, of 10, but more speed to his inside, he's already going to be in the clear. He's going to get the trip I think he wants. Certainly a major player. Eight minutes away from this fourth at Belmont. You hear that call to post in the background as fans continue to take in the scenery here on one of the big days, biggest days certainly here at Belmont, but one of the biggest days of our entire sport all year long anywhere as we start with American Law, Danny Gargan, Kendra Carmouche. A ah, consistent sort shows up every time, but he has one win, seven seconds. That starts to become problematic to me because does he want to be herd bound? Is he just is he content to run with horses as opposed to running by horses? Here's Ship Sational. He was on the Triple Crown Trail last year as a New York bred. A horse that showed so much promise early on. Nice New York bred for Eddie Barker, Iris Smith, but it just seems like he lost his form recently. This horse faced a very good one, Rotney, who was so impressive yesterday. Yeah, Rotney, your reigning champion, sprinting New York bred, uh, rallied well, gets another furlong to work with, and a horse with a, a, a chance. If they go quick, he'll be closing. Going to skip Bezos. We'll get back to him. Here's all about the money for David Jacobson. Yeah, all about the money. And listen, David Jacobson's having a terrific Belmont stand, winning at about 36% right now. Um, and, and you get Irad Ortiz, and he's always going to take money. Bouncer, this is a three-year-old for Mark Cassie. And the last time we saw him, it was at Gulfstream, South Florida, his three-year-old debut, a winning one. Yeah, good speed, but he's only won when he's raced exclusively against Florida breads. Those are restricted races for horses just bred in that state. And against his own age group as well. He's facing older company here, including this guy here, Life Changer. Yeah, Life Changer, listen, hard knocking, hard trying, well posted. Get Joel Rosario, who had a good run with him uh, three back last November. Now we talked to Jenna Antonucci, trainer of Archangelo, who will be in the Belmont later. This one faced him in the Peter Pan to no avail. I like this horse a little bit here. I like the turn back for him. He was sparring with Bishop's Bay, and it just wasn't good enough. A little overmatched last time. I like the turn back. Kentucky Derby winning rider Javier Castellano on 12th man for Michelle Nevin. Yeah, hard trying sort. Would like to see some pace heat up and kind of set up his late run. And Looney Sima, this horse has some races to go back to three, four, five starts ago that make him overwhelmingly the horse to beat. Well, he's, I think, more of a closing sprinter. He, he's kind of stretched out, and I don't think he really wants to go further. And sometimes people see a closing sprint, and they go, oh, he'll be better going longer. No, it, it, it kind of mutes their late kick. 
And here's Bezos, the biggest price on the board who we skipped over in the post parade. Three-time winner, but two starts at Belmont has not hit the board. Uh, could lend speed to the affair, though. He gets seven-pound apprentice, Elijah Greenidge. Now, he's a seven-pound apprentice because he started his apprenticeship in Barbados. In Barbados, they don't claim 10 pounds. He's only won one race. So technically, in, in New York, he would be a 10-pound apprentice. But once you start your apprenticeship under certain rules, you have to see them out under those rules. So technically, Eric Greenridge is a seven-pound apprentice, but he's only won one race so far. Meanwhile, back to Looney Sema, 11 to 1. And there is Elijah on the four, Bezos. But back to Looney Sema, we're going to show you that victory for him on a good steel track. It was back in March. It was at Aqueduct, and he came from well off it to be a good horse for the level. Named O Trouble, and a third place finisher would come back to win his next start. Yeah, C came with a relentless rally. Again, he'll, he'll want to see pace, but the way he finished. You know, you, you feel like the turn back's going to suit him, and he's going to come with his run. I, I, I like closing sprinters. I think people get lost sometimes wanting to uh, stretch them out because they close so well at shorter distances. Uh, it doesn't usually work when a horse that's have a, has a specific style like this. Peter Walder trains. Last time sprinting, and this is a bit of an elongated sprint, but he was a winner at that six and a half furlong distance. As we go back here to American Law, Kenner Carmouche, Danny Gargan, and this horse with the inside post, he's been able to show some pace in the past. You got to think Kendrick's going to try and fire out of there. And he faced a really good horse last time out. Listen to your heart. Uh, I went back to back races with 100 buyer speed figures. I know he was beat pretty easily by Rotney yesterday, but that horse had been on a very good roll. Yeah, and listen, R Rotney is a serious sprinter, and I, you know he he I think's got open stakes in his future. Um, Kendrick's a rider that really understands the importance of position. He understands the importance of protecting his inside position. He gives horses those big warm-ups that I like. I believe in big warm-ups. You've got a flight animal. You want them limbered up. You want the blood pr pumping properly. You don't want them to drop all their blood cells lurching out of the gate without that proper warm-up. I, I just think uh, Kendrick is the right kind of rider in a situation like this. Six to one on his mount here, American Law. Let's go to Michelle for more. I love what Richie was saying right there, but before we get back to American Law, I just want to note that the four Bezos really acting very naughty there behind the gate. You saw him on the screen. He was kind of going sideways. I thought he was going to hit the temporary rail. His rider did get him straightened back up, but uh, he needs some help from a pony person, maybe. Uh, back to the one American Law. I like this horse on paper. I loved him in the warm-up. Like Richie said, I am a fan of solo warm-ups. I like to see the rider turn the horse loose, get him going quick, and you know, really get those juices flowing, uh, especially with first-time starters or two-year-old horses. I feel like that just makes such a difference in their focus as they go postward for the first time uh, or even the first time in a long time. So I love that angle, and I feel like we see it on the East Coast a lot more than we do on the West Coast, although it's starting to be a little bit more prevalent. The East Coast riders are just so good about that, just turning everything loose from the pony for such a good warm-up. As far as American law, he's been super consistent in 2022 and 2023. I'm not in love with the rail draw. He had that last time. And on paper, you're like, hey, he finished third, but it was a four-horse field. So I don't know if you can necessarily write home about that being a tremendous effort. He's run second multiple times, seven times in his 13 lifetime out. So again, picks up a lot of checks, but most of those were versus maidens. A horse that was intriguing to me also was the A. Asmodeus for Bill Morey, who's winning at 29% right now. After breaking his maiden, he came right back to the Peter Pan and tried to do the speed situation that day, folded up, uh, got beaten by Ar Archangelo and many others. He was crushed by 23 lengths, but we're going to get him some easier company here. I mean, that was a graded stakes try. They're bringing him back. And I think most important for me is he's getting a cut back in distance. It's going to be going seven furlongs. He should have enough fitness in him now after the couple of miles and the mile and an eighth. I think the one turn here is going to be good for him. So he's really intriguing to me at 10 to one from a trainer that knows how to get him ready. And it's having just a phenomenal year. Michelle, thank you. Getting close to lining up here in this fourth at Belmont, seven-eighths of a mile distance. And, you know, back to Kendrick Carmouche in American Law on the inside. Who do you think fires away in this race early on? 
Well, I, I think Kendrick will be forward. I don't think he maybe has the most natural speed in this race, but he's definitely going to be forward. I think Bezos potentially could with Elijah Greenidge. You know, apprentices have a tendency to let horses kind of roll along. Bouncer uh, with Luis Saez is quick. Uh, I, I think he's probably the most likely pace setter. Bouncer, that three-year-old who was tackling older company for the first time. Successful in that comeback race at Gulfstream at six furlongs where he was forward. And you know Luis Saez, who will ride Bouncer, when he has the opportunity, he is always aggressive. Yeah, listen, another rider that understands the importance of position, particularly dirt racing in North America. It, it's won by the horses that are slowing down the least. The r races are run backwards, if you will, faster early, slower late. Not as much on, in, in turf races. Obviously, horses finish. Position's important in all racing, but particularly dirt racing. And getting a horse in a position where they're not getting too discouraged from kickback if they're more of a closing type. Sometimes you need to ride a horse up onto heels more so that the kickback's hitting him in the chest as opposed to straight in the face. A fine balance for a rider. You can't get up too close to heels because you don't want to clip heels. Your horse can trip. But at the same time, it also will get them find their stride if it's not hitting him in the, f in the face as much. Look at the five right there, all about the money. Murat Ortiz Jr. for once not getting over bet heavily in a race here in New York. I, th I think it speaks volumes to the depth of this race. I mean, this is a really good, strong, competitive race. I think there's several ways to go. And that's what is the beauty of days like this, Greg. That, you know, you get these deep fields, competitive. And if you happen to kind of mine that nugget, that, that jewel, that is eight or 10 to one, it's gonna make your day a little sweeter. Yes, it can. Including potentially with a pick four that begins in this race coming up. Grade three poker is next for those thinking about playing the sequence, by the way, we're gonna see, oh, it was just a sensational effort. Shea Pierre in that grade one makers mark mile win last time out. Modern games, your Breeders' Cup mile winner wasn't even on the screen at the wire. That's how much daylight Shea Pierre had from that horse in the race. Shea Pierre was very good. And, and, uh, and, and you find it interesting too, right? Flavian Pratt picked up the mount there. He had been successful last summer with Emirati, uh, the Chad Brown trainee. He stays with Shea Pierre. Shea Pierre, by the way, really good French restaurant up in Saratoga, out past the wishing well. Mm, cannot <laughs> wait. We're on the clock. <laughs> for Saratoga soon, but we got some pretty good days left here, including Belmont Stakes Day today. Still have six grade ones ahead of us on this tremendous star-studded lineup card. Right now it's a fourth, and there's the three stepping in, Romantic Gamble. I like this horse in here. That was a really tough customer he faced. Going to definitely need some pace in front of him to work out for him this afternoon, but a five-time winner. He's been first or second, eight of his 18 starts in a very competitive beginning to a pick four coming up here in the fourth from Belmont. Let's go upstairs. John Imbrial, the call. And we're waiting now for number five, All About the Money, and number 10, Looney Sima. A field of 10 set to go seven furlongs. This is race number four on the Belmont Stakes card. And Looney Sima, the last to load. He's in, and we're ready to go. And uh, they're off. And it is a bouncer and Bezos. Bezos and Bouncer. They're 1 2 going up the back stretch. American Law down on the inside runs in third. Life Changers next in fourth. Romantic Gamble in the White Blinkers is in fifth. And then it is all about the money. On the outside is Asmodeus. Shipsational is down at the rail. The trailers are 12th man and Looney Sima. First quarter in 23 and one-fifth seconds, and it's big long shot Bezos who has the lead here by a length. Bouncer runs in second. American Law has gotten off the rail and is on the outside now in third. A break of two to Life Changer in fourth. Another two and a half lengths. Ship Sational is down at the rail and racing in fifth. Then all about the money. Romantic Gamble is in between horses. The half in 46 and two-fifth seconds. It is still Bezos with the lead over Bouncer. And Life Changer has now moved into third. American Law is back running in fourth. They come into the stretch now with Bezos 
and bouncer and life changer on the outside. Down at the rail, 12th man is gaining ground along with Ship Sational as they head for the 16th pole. Now it's bouncer and life changer, and those two will come out to the finish with life changer taking over in deep stretch to win it. Life changer over bouncer, and 12th man was third. Huge long shot trying to wire this field. The apprentice, Elijah Greenidge, he winds up backing up. Joel Rosario, John Terranova, and Life Changer, the favorite to win. Yeah, worked out that trip that he wants, making that outside rally. Now, we've had two dirt races so far on the card. One, a very lot, both very logical results. But both horses rallying on the outside on a track that feels like it could be a little bit on the slow side to me. You look at the early fractions. Uh, bouncer, very nice effort from him, but life changer, Joel Rosario, a rider that resorts to the crop as little as possible, gives him one reminder late, he keeps after him, gets it done, delivered him with a perfectly timed ride. As usual, from Joel, two to one favorite with a win, seven, six, nine, two. As the favorite for Gatsis Stables, six year old son of. Preakness winner Oxbow, who's ridden a victory in that race by our own Gary Stevens. Three wins now at Belmont in six tries here for the six-year-old. Yeah, John Terranova does such a good job, and he's been training for Gasta Stable for so long. It's nice when you see that owners and trainers have that relationship forged over time, and there's that mutual trust. You know, sometimes you get owners that want to change trainers and jockeys like they change their socks. It's nice when you see longevity in a relationship like that. So life changer, the favorite with a victory here in the fourth at Belmont, still to come later this afternoon. And one of those six grade ones, the Manhattan, Charlie Appleby, he'll have two shots in the Manhattan, Warren Point and Ottoman Fleet, who is coming off that grade two Fort Marcy win here at Belmont. We'll have a preview coming up. Back with you on our Belmont Stakes Day coverage on FS1, regional networks out in Southern California, Belmont Stakes Day. It's brought to you in part where you can play it all at Naira Betts, bet any track, anywhere, anytime at NairaBets.com. Life changer, Joel Rosario for the man standing by with Michelle Yu. Yes, Greg, I'm with John Terranova, one of the happiest guys at Belmont Park, right? You always have a smile. Always, yeah. 
All right, I want to talk a little bit about this horse. What does it mean for you to be able to win with horses like this from some of your foundation clients? Oh, it means the world. They, uh, th and especially this horse, we've had him since he was a yearling. He's six now. He's, you know, runner up a lot of times, but very competitive always. And uh, nice to show up on a big day. I think the last time we won with him was on Travers Day at Saratoga. So he, he shows up on the big days, but uh, very classy horse. Our crew's done a great job with him. Claire and everybody uh, gets on him every day, and uh, they just love him. He's a barn favorite. Well, so Claire said that she's, that she's been gotten him since he was two years old. Mm. What is it about him that makes him such a popular horse? You know, he's got a great name. He's got a great physique. He's just great personality, and, it, you know, he's just one of those characters in the barn that we all love, and uh, we just root for him every time and put him out there when he's uh, ready to go, and he's been competitive, you know, pretty consistent horse, so a lot I'm, of fun. I'm so glad that you mentioned that he has got some quirks. I heard he has some quirks. Tell me something funny he does. Yeah, he goes out to the track and he throws his neck around like a big giraffe, like he's in one of those giraffes when they fight, you know, so he's funny like that. They call him like he's got Tourette's or something like that, but he's got his, he's got his tics, but he's, he's a character. You know, we all love him. Congratulations, John. Thanks, Michelle. And we've got all the girls right here. Claire and the, the aforementioned Claire, his uh, normal rider standing right here, and she was like a proud mama for this victory. Always good to see John Terranova have success on this circuit. Very good trainer. Very good trainer, really nice person. Uh, he's somebody that's easy to root for. He and his wife, Tanya, work so hard, and they work side by side, making these horses the best they can be. And I love hearing the stories about horses and how they're beloved in the barn. Um, it, you know, and usually they have nicknames in the barn. You know, I, I, I just really appreciate that end of it. Well, we teased going to break, talking about the Manhattan on the turf, and ever since his arrival and really coming out party, Charlie Appleby in the just a game a couple of years ago with Althika. He has been a mainstay and he's taken most of the major prizes on the turf when he has shown up. He's gonna send out two in the great one Manhattan at a mile and a quarter, including Ottoman Fleet, who was an even money favorite and did not disappoint in the great two Fort Marcy here at Belmont. No, and, and you know, just had a perfect prep uh, coming into this, uh, this day. Richard Mullins aboard, uh, William Buick comes in, their main go-to guy, Charlie Appleby, Godolphin. And, and honestly, my favorite rider from Europe. I love the way William Buick positions horses. I love the way he finishes. And what can you say about Charlie Appleby? He just knows what horses are going to excel with American, North American style racing. You know, horses that are gonna be able to keep pace, horses that are gonna handle the ship, the arduous travel, uh, that have the right temperament, and. He's really hit on the formula. I, obviously, they're good horses. That being said, identifying which ones will excel shipping here. And this is a runner for Godolphin and Charlie Appleby, too, that has had past success at this distance of a mile and a quarter. Yeah, and it, that's one thing I've noticed in Europe. They're so good at identifying horses' limitations, how far they actually want to run. They've got the prep going the mile and an eighth here in the, in the Fort Marcy with a perfect ride and perfect trip. But he's won twice at the mile and a quarter distance with a second and a third. He'll definitely stay. Althika, Yabir, now out of fleet. This is just at Belmont. I think everyone else on this circuit, they're not glad to see him here. <laughs> but he has had just incredible success. And, uh, you know, as betters, you love to see him show up because he's such a reliable trainer. Probably the most dominant trainer in the game right now. Well, me as a fan of the sport, I love to see this cross-participation. We have more American trainers shipping to Europe, trying Royal Ascot, and now we've got more European trainers shipping to America to take advantage of these big purses and, you know, different kind of turf courses, identifying which horses will excel on firmer turf courses, which we have here in North America usually, depending on the weather. But uh, I, I like it. The, the game has gotten smaller, more international uh, participation. That makes it great for the fans, too. We talked about a star we're going to see coming up in the next race here at Belmont Chez Pierre. Sensational, the maker's mark. Uh, this horse was beat by him in that race, and then he came back to win a grade one. Up to the mark. We'll get to up to the mark in a moment. Here's the other Appleby horse, Warren Point. Yeah, Warren Point missed the break, was away awkwardly. Uh, not a tremendous amount of pace on in this man of war. Looked like he was going to loom up and win it, and then he just kind of flattened out a little bit late, probably having to make up too much ground, you know, after that poor start, but got himself in a position to win it and then just could not quite finish uh, the deal. And a horse, though, that I don't think is faced maybe the, as the depth of company that he's facing here. I gotta say, the horse who beats him here is one of the coolest stories we have today. 
Red Knight, this nine-year-old New York Red. Grade one win for him. And he just keeps on rolling. He's gotten better and better as he has gotten older at this advanced age. He's 12 for 34. He's nine. He wins a grade one at nine, a New York bred, which, which I just think is phenomenal. Owned by the breeder, mm -hmm. right? So they, they've been involved. Now, in New York, horses are not allowed to race at 10. I think horses like this should make them rethink that rule because it's not age that defines a horse. It's the form they're in. Yeah, and Connect, they had thought about retiring this horse, but then all of a sudden he came back on again, and now he's the best he's ever been. Hey, listen, especially horses that get breaks and allow Mother Nature to heal whatever little, you know, physical ailments they have. There's no substitute for horses having that natural time yeah. off. Let's get to up to the mark now. That's the horse who was beat by Shea Pierre. Comes back, wins a great one at Churchill Downs for Todd Fletcher. This is an eight to five morning line favorite. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's coming off some big efforts. You know, Todd Fletcher, um, he got up going the mile in an eighth. Maybe the mile is a little sharp for him with the likes of Shea Pierre and Modern Games, but the company lines are there and a horse that's continued to improve. Three for four on turf. They were intent on, I mean, he showed so much ability on dirt but he has obviously blossomed since the recent move to the grass. Yeah, three for four on the turf, and when he was beaten, he was beaten by the likes of Shea Pierre. We'll get a, a little window into him earlier in the day. Maybe that'll be a barometer of how up to the mark will, uh, you know, compete here in the, in, in the uh, Manhattan, but uh, he's really done nothing wrong. He got yeah. beat by two of the better milers, and now he gets more ground to work with. Yeah, which it seems like is, is what he wants, at least the mile and an eighth. He ran a much better race than he ever has previously on the grass. We're going to get back to Michelle right now, standing by with a special guest. Thanks so much, Greg. I'm joined by Bob Salvio from the uh, Genting Americas East. You're the president, and I have to ask you, tell me what's going on that's new at Resorts World. Oh, first of all, thanks so much for having me on. There's so much new going on up in our Resorts World Catskills. We're opening up on August 28th a new golf course called The Monster, which is a Reese Jones uh, reimagined course from the old Concord days. So we're really excited about that. We opened up a Resorts World Hudson Valley in Newburgh at the Newburgh Mall up in the in the Hudson Valley area just five months ago. And then here in Queens, we just opened up RW Prime, a new East meets West kind of steakhouse concept. We put in 1,500 new units. Um, we have our new uh, Hyatt Hotel, which is fabulous. And we're applying for a table games license for Queens in Bimini. We opened up a new beach club. And in Vegas, uh, in two weeks, I'll be out there for a second anniversary of Resorts World Las Vegas. So there is something going on everywhere at Resorts World. I can't believe that you did that list so flawlessly. I'm very impressed. Thank you. And how does it feel for you? How proud are you that Resorts World has been able to be hand in hand with some of our biggest days in racing out here in New York? Uh, you know, Naira has been a great partner with us all the way through. Obviously, they're next to us over at Aqueduct, and it's such a great racing organization. There's such a tradition here. I was happy to hear about the redevelopment plans because that tells us that forever this will be a special place, and for Resorts World to be paired up here with the New York Racing Association on Belmont Day, you couldn't ask for anything better than that. I appreciate the time and look forward to some of your upcoming ventures. Thank you so much for having me on. Guys? So much to look forward to, of course, Resorts Royal Casino right next door to the Big A. Yeah, a lot going on there. I love the uh, uh, action that's up in the Hudson Valley, not far from where I live. I spoke with Bob Savio at, at Aqueduct. I'm invited over there. I got to take him up on that. And uh, I don't know what my game would be. I guess I just play some slots, right? You seem to do good at whatever you're playing. Think with the scratch off. Scratch off <laughs> tickets. This guy cannot lose. And every day you come to me with another winner. We're going to take a timeout. When we're back, we'll be joined by Paula Duca stepping on the set. And of course, Flavian Pratt. Huge chance later today in the Belmont Stakes. He'll be on Angel of Empire for Brad Cox. Going to try and get him in the game a little earlier with those blinkers on. He possesses such natural athleticism. It is Golden Pal winning the Juvenile Turf Sprint. He's very, very agile and quick. Golden Pal has repelled the challenges. Each and every race, he just got better and better. Golden Pal broke like a rocket. Golden Pal, wire to wire. It's a very confident horse. Golden Pal, the lead is out to five lengths in deep stretch. He's just got a brilliant mind. They're all behind Golden Pal. I'm going to be breeding everything I have to it. 
at the final leg of the Triple Crown no matter where you are with Naira Bets. Available nationwide, Naira Bets is the official betting app of the Belmont Stakes with video streaming, weekly promotions, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Celebrate the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's legendary Belmont Stakes win and be a part of the action with Naira Bets. Scan now for your free $25 Belmont Stakes bet plus a $200 deposit match for new members with promo code FOX25. Last September broke records. It brought the energy, the magic, the momentum. And this year, it all returns. Only at the World Yearling Sale. Keeneland, September. On a perfect day, there is no finer place in all of sports. And beautiful, truly stunning. For the Breeders' Cup World Championships. French jockey Flavian Pratt has experienced success everywhere he's gone. He had become one of the most prominent riders in California before moving his tack to the East Coast last spring. Four straight graded stakes for Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt, they're putting on a show. Well, leaving California was uh, definitely not an easy decision. You don't want to be in the comfort zone and kind of, you know, try to challenge yourself and, and see what could you do somewhere else. So that was my thought process, moving on the East Coast and, and riding with obviously a great colony of rider and different tracks. At that point, I thought it was the right thing to do. Stepping out of his comfort zone is not something new for Pratt. I left home when I was 14 to get to the jockey school. I actually tried to leave when I was 13 and the school didn't accept me because I was too young. Uh, I think I cried for a whole day. Never been that sad in my life. In fact, Pratt's first introduction to horse racing wasn't with thoroughbreds. I grew up in the harness business with my dad, who's a trainer. Uh, now my brother was working with him. Obviously, when you see your dad, you know, walking from 5.30 to 1 p.m. and going back to the barn from 3 to 6, uh, you learn what's hard work, and I just think it's, it's an amazing way to live. In France, it can happen where there's a racetrack where half of the car will be harness and half would be thoroughbred. I love to go on the weekend with my dad and, and see the thoroughbred and, and then went a few times to Longchamp with, with my mom and, and, and some friends. So yeah, it's, it's always been in the back of my mind. Drugier and she will deliver here, coming from off the pace under Flavien Pratt. By 2019, Pratt had grabbed some of the attention of trainers nationwide, enough to get the call from Hall of Famer Bill Mott in America's most prestigious race setting up the biggest moment of his riding career. Obviously, we had seen that he was doing very well in California and was a good rider, and we put him on, and it couldn't have worked out better. What a great trip he worked out for him. He was three wide around the last turn, but he was able to avoid the contact that some of the other horses had on the inside of him. We actually did not get bothered. You know, we took a slight little bump coming out of the turn, but really nothing that that would have affected us one way or another. Then, of course, 24 minutes later, they hung our number up and made us the winner. Winning the Derby was a, a strange experience. A lot of uh, mix of mo emotion, because uh, obviously you win the Derby, so it's great, but it's by disqualification. There's always going to be some controversy, and yeah, I didn't cross the line first. And then you have to wait uh, we had to wait a long time before they decide to put Country House as a winner, so uh, hopefully one day we'll cross the line first. Not the way he wanted it to happen, but certainly he'll take it, won't he? A Kentucky Derby win after the fact for Flavia Pratt. What a list of runners he's got coming up. Well stacked and he is in demand. A lot of big name trainers wanted him to make this move east and 
He has not disappointed Michelle as he has just thrived coming to New York. I mean, it was a real sad thing for us in Southern California to lose him, basically. Uh, and when he started off his career and he was just galloping for Richard Mandela, you already could see that he was going to be something special. When he would just work horses, he had a very great, great way of using his hands and relaxing them. And then when he started to ride in races, and he was just making smart decision after smart decision. So he's been really a jewel in Southern California. And I love that the piece really went into, you know, the, the stepping outside the box scenario of it because you're in your comfort zone where you're winning four races a day multiple days a week so to uplift from that and move across the country into one of the toughest riding colonies that there is uh, it took some gumption i think in flavian's part and maybe last year it didn't play out because what he really wanted was that eclipse award but i think that he just showed everybody how talented he is i think he's so versatile and i love watching him change his riding style was pretty clear in california he could do a little bit of everything but when he came to the east coast i just felt like he got a lot more finesse he got so much more powerful um and i what i love about Flavian from someone that's ridden him on multiple occasions from our barn is that he, he can do anything and he does the best by the horse. He gets them the best trip even if it wasn't the one that you originally planned out and he picks up a horse and he can carry him across the finish. I know that the MIG mentioned that earlier how strong of a finisher he is and it is so true. He gets along with his horses really well and he gets that extra effort out of them late and I love that New York is getting to see how good Flavian is uh, because I feel like they don't maybe pay attention as much as some of our riders out there like Oh, you guys are just on your island in California. But Flavian has come over here and stamped it as, you know what, we can have good riders and good horses from the West Coast coming east, and uh, we make an impact. I moved to the East Coast has really paid off as Paula Duca joins us on the set. And I know you've seen a lot of Flavian when he was out on the yeah. West Coast as well, but we talk a lot about him, and Mick says it all the time too. He is a rider that – just does everything really well. Yeah, you know, and I think the difference that, that separated Flavian, you know, a lot of riders that come over here from Europe, um, they're not aggressive riders. As is not like saying that that's a negative. It's just like the paces are a lot slower when you in Europe than when you come here to the States. Flavian, if you ever watch Flavian, he's always a forward rider and his horse is on the turf. And that's what's made him a great rider on the dirt because I think a lot of the European riders, Mick, tell me if I'm wrong, no, they right. have to learn. I've, I've talked to many that say yep. they have to learn how to ride on the dirt. I think Flavian had that natural forward movement that dirt was already natural for him. I, I think he did something so smart, too. Obviously, he has a horse background, and, and that comes through, right, with the harness yeah. background his dad. But coming here early and working for Mandela and really immersing himself in North American racing culture. And I appreciate and admire him because he sought out a challenge. Yeah. That's what champions do. You don't just stay in your comfort zone. You go out and seek to, to compete against the best. And th that he has that confidence in himself too to make that kind of a move Absolutely. because he believes, and he's right, that he wants his name called for that Eclipse Award. And it's it, there's one in his future, in the very near future. He, of course, is going to be on Angel of Empire in the Belmont Stakes. And this is a horse they would like to get involved a little bit earlier in the race today. Don't you think he will, though, Paul? Just the pace is going to be more moderate than races he's coming out of. He adds blinkers, although he's trained in them in the past. And this is the Arkansas Derby, which, I mean, you could speak more about. You were yeah. on site. But how about this long, extended running? Well, he had that long, extended run there. And you know what, Mick, too, as well? You know that if you sit fifth or sixth in these prep races, where are you going to sit in the Derby? 15th or 14th. It just yeah. is, I mean, when you have 20-some-odd horses, obviously we only had 18 this year. This was his coming out party. And I thought he ran well in the Kentucky Derby. I, you know, and Flavian gave him a monster ride. If you go back and you really watch it, he was kind of drafting off Mage and hoping that he could go by, could just, could never, he could never, could. Javier just had more horse. We'll see if he could get involved a little bit earlier. That obviously that was an incredibly hot pace in the Kentucky Derby. He's not going to be anywhere near as far back as he was that day. You know, when we talk about pace, what's a fast pace for a mile and a half race? I mean, I think people get a little bit confused because the Derby's run at way too fast the pace for the race. 45 and change going to mile and a quarter. That's a sprint pace. So if the Belmont, to me, a legitimate pace in the Belmont is 48 or under. If you go 46 and change, it's too fast. 47 and change is borderline too fast. 48 to 49, to me, is a moderate pace. Let me ask you a quick question. How, from tip to tail, how, how far do you think this field's going to be separated? Or early on or? Down the backside. Down the backside. Oh, I, I think you'll be spread out about 9, 10 lengths. I don't think any more than that. 
It's going to be very interesting. You know, National Treasure, who's going to go in National Treasure? Can tap it, can tap it, try to stay close. Is Angel of Empire, is Hit Show going to show speed to help out Angel of Empire? It's going to be very interesting how it plays out the first quarter to half a mile. Still believe with that West Coast sprint speed National Treasure has. He's, yeah. he's the quickest in the race. Yeah. Is he going to get pushed too fast early, though? I, I don't see it. I think he gets an easy lead. I just don't see him getting a mile and a half. That's my opinion. He, he, listen, we have opinions. Horses have the answers. I Personally, I, I think he'll make the lead. I think he'll be comfortable. I don't see him staying. I understand. But the other part about it is, is you know, he was able to go 49 yeah. in the Preakness. $15,000 claimers go 49. <laughs> right. You're going to let a Bob Baffert horse go 49? That's a dangerous uh, slope to slide yeah. on. Yeah. We got a big race coming up. Great free poker on the turf, mile on the grass. And one of the emerging stars of this mile turf division, Shea Pierre, that performance in the great one makers, Mark Mile. I mean, he dominated a horse who is the reigning Breeders' Cup mile winner of modern games. Yeah, and, and by the way, the six is in there, uh, the graphics. Emmanuel is five to one. I, I think he's the... I guess the other alternative, that's if Shea Paris just doesn't run. I mean, he was dynamite last time. He and here's our post raid. We will start with the Makers Mark Mile winner, Flavian Pratt rides. Yeah, dominant uh, last time in the Makers Mark. Interesting, it was his first time in North America competing without Lasix. Obviously, they don't have Lasix today here in the poker. He's versatile. He can make the pace or he can sit just off it. That makes him doubly dangerous and obviously talented. A move he made in that race, too. I mean, that was just incredible. We'll get a chance to show it to you coming up. Emirati trying to win three in a row for Chad Brown. Yeah, really? Uh, a nice horse. Won a third of his races. Not one at Belmont. And Chad's really good at getting these horses ready for these big races. But he's eight years old now. Here is Dreams of Tomorrow. Sat close to a very slow pace to win at Belmont last start. Yeah, and there's a horse that does like Belmont, though, Wolfie. I mean, the race was pretty good last time, and I thought it was okay. I mean, 19 to 1, you can reach for a worse long shot. Joe Sharp, trainer with Tyler Gaffley on board Anaconda. Yeah, beat easier in the elusive quality last time. Um, was beaten a nose by Big Everest, who came back and won a stake at Monmouth. This is a tougher set he's facing today. And here is Emmanuel. He's run some big numbers, including a victory over Shea Pierre. That was at Tampa earlier this year. Yeah, he's got to get over his big numbers. because All of his big numbers are in Florida. He's got to transfer him here into New York, and he could be right there with the one. I thought Philo de Ariana, one of the major X factors on the whole card today. This horse has big time talent, and he came off an eight month layoff on synthetic. He's better on turf. Yeah, seven year old son of Jocelyn Myers, seven for 10 lifetime. I think he makes the lead here. I think he's going to be the horse to run down under Luis Saez. Five to one on a horse who has put together a couple of very big efforts in Canada at seven furlongs and a mile to win on the turf. Six for eight on turf in his career. But no doubt about who the favorite is and deserves to be with that performance we saw last time out from Shea Pierre. Yeah, I mean, listen, he was really dominant. And the two horses that came by, we'll see up the mark a little bit later in the card here today. But... You know, Wolfie's w right. It, it was a devastating turn of foot um, at Keeneland that day in the Maker's Mark. So, um, and with you, like you were saying, Mig, with not a lot of pace in here, can probably carve out his own trip, you know? Yeah, hey, listen, we, we talked about Flavian before we did the post spray. He's understanding of position. He's going to come out forward, and if the seven wants to go or somebody else wants to go, at least he's going to create separation. But and this... It was this is, is the turn of foot you were talking about, Greg. Sorry. It was a move before this, too, where a horse took yeah. off on him, and he just, Flavian Pratt nudged him a little, caught right up to him, and overtook him easily. But it's not how he's doing it. It's modern games behind him. Yeah. <laughs> a Breeders' Cup winner. And the horse that ran third in there is not a slouch at all up the mark for Todd Pletcher. Who won a grade one in his next start. <laughs> yes. So, like, he destroyed two very nice horses. Now, I get it. He, he, a lot of people call it the regress or the bounce factor that he, he might you know, go backwards from that race. He could probably still go a little bit backwards and still win this race. And he's had, Mig, he's had two months to recover as well. Yeah, and he's got a terrific conditioner in Arnold Delacour, a guy who you know, trains at a fair hill, gives horsemen an opportunity to do so many different things with a horse, keep their mind fresh. Um, he's a very good horse. So just what Paul said. 
Modern Games is a world-class miler. He manhandled Modern Games. Yeah. I remember watching that race going, did that just happen? It was, it was eye-opening. Yeah. No question. One to two favorite, Shea Pierre. And as you said, two trip-wise here. They start out of that chute on this Widener turf at a mile. Set up to get a perfect trip. Yeah, he really is. I mean, and you can see that with the position of the gate out of that mile shoot. It's not much of a slight bend into the back stretch. It's more pronounced mile and a 16th on the main and then even more pronounced mile and a 16th on the inner turf. This is a very gentle slope into the back stretch. He's got inside position. You come out running. Make other people make decisions. I don't like when riders allow a race to be dictated to them. Flavian and Pratt doesn't do that. For more on Shea Pierre, the one to two favorite, let's go to Michelle. Guys, I'm up here uh, with the connections of Shea Pierre. You've already heavily discussed him. I gotta ask Mr. Jackson, were you as impressed with his Maker's Mark effort as we were? Yes, we were. Uh, we really didn't expect him to do that well, but he uh, ran a, a really great race. I mean, having a horse like Modern Games behind him and just drawing away at the end, did it, did it leave you with some excitement? It sure did. We, 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 we really enjoyed it. I'm going to come over here and talk to Arno. also. You know, he's breaking from the rail here. Do you feel like your hand is a little forced from this spot to maybe send when he's done some of his best ra racing right off the pace? Well, it's probably going to have to break. It looks like there's plenty of space on the outside. So I hope that the pace go, but we, we but Flavian kind of agreed that we kind of need to break well and put him in a good spot and, and pick it from there. Mr. Jackson said they were a little surprised with that big effort. How did you feel going into the maker's mark about his chances? Well, I thought that Modern Games was a tough one, mm -hmm. uh, but I felt pretty good about the rest of the field that day. When did you start thinking the poker would be his next spot? Uh, right after the race. It was either the, the, um, the race in California or this one. Um, the race at Santanita it was a little bit complicated to get him there. Mm -hmm. We're only like a couple of hours away from, from Fair Hill here. It makes a lot more sense. And anyway, our big uh, objective for the spring was the Maker's Mark Mart, and he did it. So now let, let's go to summer, and uh, hopefully can run well uh, here in Saratoga. All right, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Best of luck, everybody. The connections here of Chez Pierre. Michelle, thank you. We'll see if he can back up that brilliant effort. And if he can, I know we got a long way to get to the Breeders' Cup mile and, and Breeders' Cup weekend, but he is one of the favorites, if not the favorite, in the division. You know, the crazy part, it's at Santa Anita, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, this horse is, was a sprinter over in Europe and has got plenty of speed. So this horse is, could have options going to the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. It depends on what happens, but... Um, this is, was an eye-opening performance last time, and you'll see what happens here. I do think the six, Mig, I don't know who you think is the main danger in here. I do think Emmanuel, who is five for 10, does have a win over this racetrack. I know Shea Paris and buried him in the, in the maker's mark. He was hung, and he's got this wide. You know, and then they brought him right back in this race, Todd did, um, at Pimlico. He was third. He was more on the pace. I, I think, you know what ends up happening when you get left in the gate, and then you break well, you sort of stand on the pace. Maybe he'll stay somewhere in the middle, you know? Yeah, I, th I think it's a very good point. You know, it felt like maybe laying a little closer muted his late run a little bit. It felt like he just kind of flattened yeah. slightly. Ron Ortiz Jr., Tom Pletcher. And a horse who has been very good on the grass, but was no match for the foe he'll have to face again today at this mile distance at Keeneland. You know, for me, I think if I'm going to try to, I, I think the one will win, Shea Pierre. I'm just too impressed. And to put it in proper context, that was a grade one, the maker's mark. He's actually dropping down in company yeah, to a, a, a grade three, and right? And it wasn't just a grade one. That was a loaded grade one. Yeah, again, make, you know, modern games uh, uh, up to the mark, who's, you know, going to be in the Manhattan later. That being said, the horse to beat to me is the seven. Uh, Philo de Ariana, who I just think speed's always dangerous, and I think this horse makes the lead. Post time coming up, grade three poker. Let's go back to Michelle. Guys, I think on paper, like you've all said, it's hard to get away from the one shape here, especially on this class drop here. But from a looks standpoint, I kept coming back to the five. Anaconda for Joe Sharp does have some good recent form, including a stakes victory last time out. 
right here at Belmont going seven furlongs. So we know the one turn type trip is going to suit for him. Uh, this is going to be a step up in class and he has tried graded stakes to no avail previously, but he just looked really good in the paddock. I thought he warmed up really well into Tyler Gaffleone. And I think he's going to have enough pace in front of him that if he's good enough to close, he's going to be able to make up some ground. I don't necessarily know if he's good enough to win. Like I said, I kind of ignored him on paper, um, but I couldn't ignore him just from looking at him and how well turned out he was. All right, Michelle, thank you. It'd be a, a big one to shake things up on this card. Anaconda 17 to one, the five with Tyler Gaffleone and Joe Sharp. Coming off a victory against Easier, but it did come here at Belmont on this turf course in the elusive quality. Two to five favoritism, Shea Pierre, and a good point you brought up, Meg. I mean, this is a, a prestigious grade three, but it is a drop down in class for Shea Pierre and a big one off that performance last time out. Yeah, I mean, he's a grade one winner, and now he drops into a grade three. And again, a good race, and, a, and like you said, a prestigious race. But horses run in conditions. You know, maidens, A other than, two other than, three other than, even four other than, then you've got Listed stake, grade three, grade two, grade one is the highest level. He's dropping out of the highest level, Paul. Yeah, he is. I mean, if you're going to create value in here uh, and not try to beat him, I don't understand why the four is 22 to one for a horse that's two for three at the racetrack. And Shugs Barnes going okay right now. But you get Manny Franco aboard who rode this horse last time. Oh, I know the horse was six to five, but this horse can swallow up the pieces if Shea uh, Pierre gets away from this group. See if he can back up that grade one win of the Makers. Mark Miles, Shea Pierre, odds on favorite from the rail with Flavi and Pratt. It's the grade three poker. Let's go to John and Brial for the call. And uh, they're off. It was a hesitant beginning for number five, Anaconda, and he trails the field. Philo de Ariana is out for the early lead in front here by a length and a half. And the favorite, Shea Pierre, is racing in second. On the outside is Emma Rutti next in third. Then comes Dreams of Tomorrow. Down at the hedge is Anaconda. And Emmanuel is the trailer in sixth as they move up the back stretch. And it is Philo de Ariana in front here through a quarter in 23 and four fifth seconds. Shea Pierre stalking that front runner in second. And then it is Anaconda at the hedge in third. On the outside is Emirati in fourth alongside Dreams of Tomorrow. And the trailer is still Emmanuel as they approach the far turn. Philo de Ariana is the leader here by a length. Shea Pierre in second, half mile in 47 and four fifth seconds. Philo de Ariana in front by a length. Shea Pierre in second. And on the inside is Anaconda in third followed by Emirati, Dreams of Tomorrow, and Emmanuel. They are coming for the top of the stretch. Philo de Ariana, Shea Pierre getting closer now on the outside. Just in behind is Emirati. Anaconda is down on the inside. Emmanuel is getting closer. And then Dreams of Tomorrow as the field comes through the stretch now. Philo de Ariana and Shea Pierre. And on the outside, it's Emmanuel. Three of them across. Anaconda looking for a way through. It's going to be a bang bang finish here. Philo de Ariana and Emmanuel. Emmanuel got up at the end. Emmanuel nipping Philo de Ariana in the grade three poker stakes. Emmanuel, a rat Ortiz Jr. Todd Pletcher turns the tables on Shape here. Good call by you, Meg, because the seven really ran a tremendous race, and Luis Saez cut the fractions completely out, took the hit from Shea Puri, and Shea Puri gave Emmanuel a little bit of an assist here. Yeah, and he, you know, you could see that he, he, the, the seven horses fighting him off, fighting him off, and then here comes Emmanuel down the center of the track. It was a little bit hard to handle, trying to lug in under Irad Ortiz, jump back to his left lead, but just kept coming with that relentless run. I think Shea Pierre was a little bit flat. A good run from Philo Di Ariana. We should not lose sight of what Anaconda did. He completely yeah. blew the break and was only beaten about a length for everything. Six to one on Emmanuel. Wow, four for seven now on the lawn and beats a couple of really good ones in this performance. Paul, you talked about it though. Emmanuel laid up much closer last time and 
didn't have that closing kick. Today, they reverted back to the style that was successful. Well, when you went to the maker's mark, he got dead left. And, and he had no chance in that race. And so when they went into the dinner party, I think, you know, as a jockey, like anything else, when you have that kind of reaction, okay, oh, he broke, let's go towards the front end. And they went 134 for the mile, so he was up on that pace. Now today, he kind of just found that middle ground. And Irad did a great job because he was trying to lean in deep and stretch. He was able to keep him away from the other horses and go by. Strong ride from Irad. It's not easy. You're, 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 it's a balancing act, right? You don't want to slow them down, correcting them too much. But at the same time, you don't want to let them get on top of horses and bother somebody. He, he kind of walked that tightrope perfectly. Yeah. Emmanuel at six to one with the upset score. Grade three poker will have the prices. When we come back, Todd Pletcher, Sienna Farm, Windstar Farm, and a four-year-old son of more than ready with the win, beating an odds-on favorite here in the fifth. Global campaign by two, and global campaign will win the grade one Woodward. It is Global Campaign, holding on to the lead. Global Campaign, what the Peter Pan. Back with you on America's Day of the Races on our FS1 coverage. Regional Network's out in Southern California. It's brought to you in part where you can play all of today's races, including six grade ones still to come. Naira Bets. Go to NairaBets.com. Get signed up, started, bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Arad Ortiz Jr. in a manual for trainer Todd Pletcher. Your winners of the grade three poker. Yeah, big, strong ride from him. A horse that wasn't easy to handle, trying to lay in a little bit. I think that pulls him into a tie for on the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. Uh, Jockey stands with his brother, but you see, he comes off the turn a little bit wide, but he's got position to allow his horse to run. Gonna jump to his right lead, right there. Gets the lugging in, jumps back to his left lead. Now Irad's gotta get after him with a left-handed crop. And again, correcting him, and at the same time, allowing him to go forward, Paul, not the easiest thing to do. No, it isn't, because you can see he's still trying to lean in, but you can see Irad just staying strong all the way to the wire and the son of more than ready uh, the hard spun mare pays fourteen dollars and forty cents to win congratulations to santa farm and the silks that irad was wearing wins star farm fourteen dollars forty cents for the win let's go to michelle Thanks, guys. I'm joined right now by trainer Todd Pletcher. This will be the second win for Team Pletcher on Belmont Stakes Day. That was a very impressive run from Emmanuel. Did you think he just got that ideal trip he's been looking for? 
Got a super trip. You know, we thought the one, two, seven all could show some speed, so we just kind of talked about, you know, getting into a good position, letting him settle and make a run, and actually ended up taking him all the way back. And but, you know, he's still in contention with the with the pace setters. And once he tipped him out, he came with a nice run. Let's look ahead to the Belmont Stakes later on. You have Forte obviously off this big layoff. It's been a roller coaster, I'm sure, with him. How is he coming into this race, and how are you managing the challenge of getting a horse ready for this kind of an event off of the layoff? Well, he's had three really good breezes here at Belmont um, since we got here from Churchill. And we didn't miss much training. You know, he was a fit horse, ready to run in the Derby. So, look, it's a challenge. It's not ideal. We're coming in, you know, off 10-week layoff into a mile-and-a-half race. But we felt like we have a very talented horse that's training really well. And so we expect him to run well. Hopefully he just has, you know, enough conditioning in him to get the mile-and-a-half. I feel like the buzz horse has really been Tappet Trice, the way he's been training out here. What have you seen from him in the mornings? Yeah, I mean, he, he's a horse that we've been thinking Belmont for a long time. It just seems like he's, you know, he's made for it. Being, you know, the pedigree is, is there. He's got a big, beautiful galloping stride that seems to be effective in these types of races. I think, you know, running on this track with the two big sweeping turns is going to help him because, like in his Tampa race, you can tell sometimes the turns are a little hard for him. He's such a big, long striding horse. So I think... You know, everything's uh, everything's in order. He's trained great, and, you know, hopefully he can get away from the gate and get himself in a good position, good rhythm, and see what he can do. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Todd Pletcher wins the poker. He won a race earlier, and, of course, he will saddle that pair in the Belmont Stakes. Pretty good start to this card on Belmont Stakes Day for a man trying to win his fifth Belmont with those two aforementioned horses, the two-year-old champ, Forte, and, of course, Tappet Trice. He's such a thorough conditioner. He puts so much foundation. It is a big ask for Forte. Yeah. But if anybody can pull it off, I think it's Todd. He's just reminding everybody that this is his backyard. <laughs> right? He's making a statement. Yeah. We're going to move on to race six, grade two, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. little preview of the distance of the Belmont Stakes here, mile and a half for older horses. And we'll see many who have had success going longer in here. We thought Fearless might show up in this race. He wound up sprinting earlier on the card today. Right now, it's... Warrant, who is the favorite for Brad Cox with Flavian Pratt, coming off a win at a mile and a half at Churchill Downs. Uh, I guess the deserving favorite, Meg, you know, this is a horse that's missed the board only two times in his career. So he's a very, very honest horse. Um, he's gone the mile and a half three times. He's not missed the board. So I can understand where the public is going. And he's a forwardly placed horse, too, as well. He's going to create his own trip. Yeah. He's already shown he's proficient at the mile and a half. Strong connections. Yeah, there's a lot to like with the, the, the seven warrant. So Pratt will ride there. Five-time winner, including a winner at this distance, which he has in the back pocket. We'll talk more about this field coming up. Great two Brooklyn ahead at a mile and a half. And we'll talk maybe the most dominant dirt horse in the game right now. Cody's Wish, Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile winner. Just keeps reeling off win after win after win. He'll line up the Met Mile to come. Catholic Boy, a grade one winner on both dirt and turf, including this romp in the run happy Traverse Stakes. He's so impressive today, the others didn't even have a prayer. This six time graded stakes winner was the fastest three year old of his crop over 10 furlongs. At the sales, his first crop yearling sold up to $300,000. Dual surface grade one winner, Catholic Boy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Race to Twin Spires, where you can take advantage of our $200 new player offer right now. Register with code GET200 to start earning your bonus of up to $200 with Twin Spires, where you can watch and bet on the best racing from across the globe. Plus, you can check out our expert picks and weekly promotions fast and secure online betting with Twin Spires. Download the app and bet now. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, every race from every track, every track on every screen, every, screen, every day. Every day.
With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.tv today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. Back with you on America's Day at the Races on Belmont Stakes Saturday on our FS1 coverage. As the crowd continues to fill the seats here, let's go upstairs to John Embriel. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise and remove your hats as United States Army Staff Sergeant Francisco Iceporna performs our national anthem, accompanied by the West Point Color Guard. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose brush stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Get back to live action here momentarily. We're going to pick things up with a race that will be, again, contested at that Belmont distance, mile and a half over the dirt. Some older horses in the grade to Brooklyn. I'm going to jump ahead, though, and look at one of the biggest races there is in this sport. Make, you called it a stallion-making race. That's what it's known as. And Cody's Wish. Five wins in a row. Breeders' Cup dirt mile among them. And three straight grade ones. Well, it is the Hill and Dale Met Trimpolitan Handicap, Cody's Wish by Curlin. They got a great stallion roster there, but certainly Curlin, I think, their marquee stallion. Wow, I mean, he's been something special. A for 12 lifetime. And you know, a lot of people might point, okay, well, he just loves Churchill Downs. Well, uh, he's one for two here at Belmont. And I was commenting to you guys um, in commercial break, and we were offset. I've been watching horses, you know, to the point where you're examining him from over 20, 25 years, he has got to be one of the most prettiest movers I've ever seen the way he reaches out. His last win at Churchill, it was just majestic. That was off a seven month layoff yeah. too. And he, yeah, he did just float over the ground and just swoop by that field like no one was there. Yeah, I, mean, I think Paul makes a great point. The efficiency of his stride, he wastes no action whatsoever. And for a horse that's good size, he's light on his feet. I mean, he is just, and what does he have with elite, uh, in common with elite power? They both, both ran three times, broke their maiden in their fourth starts. Bill Mott, a trainer that kind of builds them into a career. Son of two-time horse of the year, Curlin, who stands at the farm with a man standing by with Michelle. Greg, I am with John Secura of Hillendale Farms at Alapa, and I want to bring you back to five weeks ago. What did it feel like for you watching a son of good magic cross the wire in front in the Kentucky Derby? Uh, we're very proud. You know, that's the ultimate achievement, the Kentucky Derby. So to have a first crop sire win their derby was just sort of beyond words with excitement and proud for the farm, proud for the horse, and proud, proud for Curlin. And then Preakness, you know, they finished second and third. Uh, second was Blazing Sevens, another good magic. So he's off to a great start in classic races. And let's hope the third Hillendale, sorry, the second Hillendale Stallion Forte is represented in the winner's circle for the Belmont today. So big, big triple crown, um, six weeks for us. 
Look, it's been a banner year for you guys, not, not just the six weeks, but a banner year already. How do you add to that? What do we look forward to? You always look forward to tomorrow. You have to keep winning, keep winning, you know? So the, uh, I think the standard is to be relevant, to win important races with your sire. That sires, that's what keeps people coming back. And we've been fortunate enough to have high profile horses that have been siring, you know, winners on the most important days in racing. So I hope it continues. That was a great segue for me because we've been talking about Cody's wish. We've been talking about Curl and, and you guys do sponsor the Met Mile. What is it like to be a sponsor of a race that is known as the Stallion Maker? Uh, we're really proud to be part of uh, Naira and, and, and this day and the Met Mile, um, so many important horses, if you said, have won the race. It's my favorite day of racing, just replete with really good horses, top to bottom, you know, dirt, turf, three-year-olds, older horses. So it's a great day, and our family makes a tradition to come to, to the Belmont for this day in particular. And uh, we're thrilled that we have representatives in, in the races and to be part of uh, a great day and, uh, in my opinion, America's greatest race course, Belmont Park. I appreciate the time, John. Thank you for having us. John Sakura represents Hill and Dale Farms, one of our big sponsors of the Met Mile. And then, of course, they stand fantastic sires such as Curlin, Good Magic, and Violence. And to have the great Curlin, two time horse of the year in all he has produced, and then a son of Curlin, Good Magic, produced Kentucky Derby winner. Just incredible. The incredible stallion roster there. And, and what they've done, right, becoming stewards of Alapa, right, and taking over that and the way they've preserved the history there. It's a place I really have to get to. I mean, it just, I, I love the history of this game. That place just oozes it. It's just beautiful. I mean, like, <laughs> and when a lot of people go out to Honda, you can literally eat off the, the, the ground. It, it's immaculate. It's beautiful. And like, you know, Michelle was saying, the sires that they're throwing out, I mean, Curlin, obviously, was a, an unbelievable runner and good magic. I mean, listen, he broke his maiden when he won the Breeders' Cup. A lot of people forget about that. And gosh, what a sire he's turned out to be. Um, Two-year-old champion. Yeah, yeah. two-year-old champion. Yeah. We're gonna take a timeout. We'll be back. Best still yet to come. And this man right here, hoping it's his time again. And after breaking through in the Belmont last year with Mo Donegal and the two-year-old champ, Forte Micropoli. His two-year-old champ getting a chance, finally, in a triple crown after scratching on the day of the Derby. We'll be back.
Back with you in our live coverage on Belmont Stakes Day here in Elmont, New York. On America's Day at the races on our FS1 coverage. Those silks in the winter circle last year, of course. Mike Rapoli with Mo Donegal on the Belmont Stakes. Well, for Queens native Mike Rapoli, it was always the Belmont, not the Kentucky Derby, that was first on his wish list. And that wish, of course, came true with Mo Donegal's performance, donning those blue and orange silks in the winter circle. This year, his journey with two-year-old champ Forte has been both rewarding and frustrating. But he's hoping to erase what could have been in the Kentucky Derby later today in the Belmont Stakes. Mo Donegal drifting out a bit, but in front and clear. And it will be Mo Donegal to win the test of the champion, the Belmont Stakes. Mo Donegal. You know, winning it last year, obviously being a childhood dream, but not just winning it, but also coming in first and second was pretty special. The last five weeks has been a little down, but you know, in all honesty, the journey started last year when he broke his maiden on this track. And then he went to Saratoga and he won the hopeful. And then he won the juvenile and he's a two-year-old champ. And he's two for two this year. Victory in the Fountain of Youth Stakes. Here's your two-year-old champion. Here's Forte, gear down. Comes back in the Florida Derby, has the worst post. He's got the 12 post before he ran. That post was one for 48. It's now two for 49. Forte, this is gonna be very close, but the champion prevails. Forte wins. Well, he beat a horse named Mage, who no, nobody really knew about until four or five weeks later when Mage happened to win the Kentucky Derby. So though that's a little disappointed, it just shows you that He's beating the best horses of the crop, and I think he's the best three-year-old, and I think we're going to see it on Saturday. But he got it done on to Louisville for Forte. The last five weeks has been a tough journey, but the last year has been a great journey. You know, does it hurt to scratch the Derby favorite the day of the Derby? Yeah, it hurts bad. When you have 75 family members and friends, and when you think about the highs and lows in life and the highs and lows in this game, many people don't get highs. And I've been so blessed to get so many highs in this game, and this game's been good to me, and, you know, maybe Saturday will be another great high. Well, such an incredible journey that Forte has brought his connections on and then just not to get the chance to run in that race. And you see a horse who you'd beat not once but twice win the run for the Roses. It had to be tough. I'm sure it's frustrating, but at the end of the day, you know, everything happens for a reason. They was, he wasn't 100%. That was picked up on. It's okay. It's a long year. And even if he doesn't win today, Paul, because it's a tall ass to win the Belmont off of a 10-week layoff, doesn't mean, I mean, it's a long season to go. I mean, it, at the end of the year, he may be the best three-year-old. Today shouldn't be the barometer of that. I'm with you. Um, you know, I think a lot of people after the Florida Derby took Forte's race as a negative. Oh, uh, maybe he's not the same horse. He barely got up. And then when Mage won the Kentucky Derby, they went, oh, okay. It actually was a pretty good race. So, you know, I had the pleasure but not the pleasure of interviewing you know Mike in that moment when they had a scratch forte and he wanted to run the horse in the derby and he was frustrated and and he talked about how his mom and, and his, his his family are getting a little bit older and he wants to them to see a, a derby winner um, you know and I tried to remind him listen what you've done for this game as well uh, is, is special too and hopefully you'll get that derby winner at some time and you could take it two ways because i think jonathan made a very good point on yesterday's show you could take it either one way they're rushing this horse into this race because mike's a, like i want my horse to run and and see how he is with the three-year-olds or todd fletcher saying he's fine and he's good to go and again back to mig's point yeah if anyone's able to get a horse who there's, yeah. there's nothing like racing fitness in the afternoon. You can't have workouts to make up for it. But Don Pletcher is someone who can get them ready. And this horse has shown up, with the exception of one race, every single time at the highest level. Well, I, but I think people at home need to understand, too, it, it's a process. It's a foundation that's laid early on. And that's what Todd's done so well consistently with his two-year-olds. It's the miles laid down earlier. It's like your baseball career. There was a lot more that went to it than just making the more major sure. leagues. And, and those steps are what's so important. You can build a beautiful house. If it's built on a bad foundation, you're going to have trouble. Build it on a good foundation, and it's going to be okay. Grade 2 Brooklyn at the mile and a half distance that we'll see later on in the Belmont is coming up. We hear the – take a look at the August Belmont Trophy, by the way. Do not – about two years ago, I touched it, and literally I, I almost got arrested. 
<laughs> can't get any fingerprints on it. It's in sh shine. What were you thinking? I, I have no clue, Greg. I still to this day have like no clue. It was like the Stanley Cup. I went to pick it up, and the guy goes, what are you doing? I didn't have gloves on or nothing. Yes, do not touch that trophy. It is beautiful. And uh, it's got a little weight on it, too. Wow, just under 22 pounds. And you get to keep it for one year and also get a little mini replica. That's pretty cool. Where would you take it? Take it everywhere, yeah, right? Me. Just take a picture right around it. my neck, probably. <laughs> I'd Great. take it on the airplane with a co pilot. Have oh, him yeah. take a picture. Buy a seat for it. <laughs> Grade two, Brooklyn next. And we're going to see. Red run the favorite in a moment. That's the two. We start with Portos for Tom Morley. Yeah, Portos uh, did have one good run at a mile and three eighths here. Just feels like his current form he'd have to improve on to be competitive here. Tyler Gaffleone for Mike Maker on Red Run, the current favorite. This is a horse that he claimed, and this is what Mike Maker does. He claims horses to go longer distance. This horse just missed in a race where the speed held up. Alfio, Luis Saez here for Anthony Quartarolo. Horse has been showing good speed against much lesser company at Thistle Downs. He feels like he's overmatched, but could have a say in how this race is run from a pace standpoint. Who's bright future? Todd Pletcher, Arad Ortiz Jr. I'm just talking about curling. This horse has never been around two turns. Four one um, turn mile race is now going to go a mile and a half. And those Micropoli silks as well in St. Elias Stable with the four. Here's next. Next, he's a marathon specialist. Uh, two for three at these marathon distances. Last time was beaten by Warrant when he was taken on a little bit early. Forewarned, I, this horse has some big numbers. Can he get this distance, Paulie? Uh, I'll tell you what, he's got the right trainer. Uriah St. Louis is the king of bombs when it comes to these races. And I'm with you, Greg. 30 to 1, he's not without a chance. Here's Warrant, Brad Cox. Coming off a big win at the mile and a half distance in the Isaac Murphy. Um, should be close. Calibrate for Jamie Ness. Got some big races. His Temperance Hill got his biggest figure going a mile and a half. And 52 to 1 on the 10 here, Centavo. Napal Chatterpaw, the trainer. Yeah, horse that won an off a turf event, but is 1 for 22 over a fast racetrack. And an even bigger price outside here, Code Runner. Raylo Gutierrez rides. Yeah, it would be a big surprise. It just doesn't seem like he has a race fast enough to compete with some of these best ones. And it's always interesting how people say, well, my horse wants to go long. Well, any horse will go any distance if you give him enough time to do it. I can go a mile and a half in five minutes. Yeah, give me enough time. <laughs> 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 Let's go to Michelle for more on the grade two Brooklyn. Guys, I'm joined right now by trainer Brad Cox, who saddles Warrant in here. He's had a hard time doubling up on wins. <laughs> can you give me a reason for that? He's inconsistent. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest reason. Uh, you know, look, he, he's doing great. He really ha is. Uh, he's a little bit of a hard horse to get a line on. Sometimes you think he's going to run a great race, and he just, you know, for whatever reason, doesn't show up that day. And then, you know, you kind of ride him off a little bit, and he bounces back and wins. So he's a little bit of a frustrating horse, but when he's good, he's really good. Let's talk about your Belmont horses later on today. Angel of Empire. I feel like everyone still likes him. He was my derby pick. How are your thoughts coming into here? I still like him. He's he, like Yeah, him. he's a good colt. He really is. I think he'll like the mile and a half. We're adding the blinkers. I don't really know what that's going to do. We've, we've worked him, you know, off and on with him over the last uh, all winter. So, but he, he's really, really doing well. I, I'm very happy with the way he's moved forward since the derby. Talk about hit show a little bit. He ran it very respectably in the Derby. He might get the best trip of your group. Yeah, he did. He got a good trip in the Derby. Uh, he stayed on well. Um, I think, you know, he's going to break, go forward, you know, let Manny kind of figure out where, where he belongs in the race and hopefully he can stay on 12 furlongs. Tap it shoes in here. You told me earlier on today, look for this guy to make some noise come summer. So what are expectations for today? Well, it's still spring. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's doing great. Uh, you know, we're going to break running from the one hole. I don't know where that's, you know, hopefully that's somewhat forwardly placed. Hopefully he can get, you know, at some point be able to relax, take a breather, and Jose can get him home. All right. Appreciate the time. Thanks, Michelle. Best of luck here. Appreciate it. Brad Cox, uh, going to be busy today, guys. Kicking it off right here with Warren. And a man who's well aware of his seasons, too. Well done. I love his interview. He's very candid. He was very good. Very relaxed. He seems like he's having fun. That was great. What's the matter with one? Well, he's inconsistent. Yeah, but he's really not inconsistent. He's 14 for 16 in the money, and he's earned over a million dollars. Um, son of Constitution. He's a game horse. And this was what I was talking about, Mick. Next in him, they went at it. And Red Run, who I like today, you would look at this and go, oh, my God, he should have went by these horses, right? I just think he needed the fitness of going a little bit longer on, on this day. Um, and these other horses just kind of stayed on. 
very difficult. Very difficult to choose out of these horses because they're all coming out of the same race. You made a good point. Red Run was trying this marathon distance for the first time last time, and he was facing horses that are specialized at those route distances, those, those elongated races that we don't see a tremendous amount of. I think there's a lot of pace in here for a mile and a half race. How do you see that? I kind of see, yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, Warren is going to go. Next is a horse that does go to the front end. So those two horses have shown speed together. Um, you know, the outside two horses. The nine is the interesting horse. Because Calibrate, if you look at Calibrate, you talked about the Temperance Hill. I, I was there. He just blew by that field, okay, in the Temperance Hill. And then I went back and I looked at it. I'm like, this horse is 30 to 1. Well, Dynaformer on the bottom side. So he had all the pedigree to want the distance uh, for Cody Razine. Now he's in the Jamie Ness barn. We've seen what Jamie Ness has done with Repo Rocks. This horse, I think, wants the distance. I don't know if he's good enough. That's the key. He might get the right trip, though. I mean, listen, I think that the three, Alfio, who's overmatched, is going to be a part of the pace. Bright Future's coming out of mile races with sharp paces. He should be forward. Obviously, Next likes to run up on the pace. Warrant wants to be close. Calibrate at 10 to 1 is too big a price and could sit the right trip. Do you feel riders in these races, they're a little bit cautious too, uh, extra cautious of going too fast early? Well, yeah, and it's, it's a distance that we don't get to ride a lot of, especially on the dirt. So you're, you're always trying to be conscious of, I don't want to be empty by the time we get to the far turn. You're still four and a half furlongs from home. Well, well talk us through that. Because you just said on the dirt. Yeah, well. It's completely different than settling. You don't, if you have a galloper, you don't care if they go 26 uh, on the turf and you're sitting in that pocket spot. But if they're going 26 on the dirt, you're in trouble. You're not going to make up ground. Yeah. You know, it, it, basically, it's a war of attrition on the dirt. Who's going to doggedly stay on? Turf, horses can accelerate. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a completely different thing. And we don't run as many marathon races on the dirt on as the we dirt, do on yeah. the turf. Yet another pick four begins here in this sixth at Belmont in this grade two Brooklyn. Rolling pick th fours almost throughout this card. And this race, I don't know, some, maybe is it um, some handicappers just feel like the longer the distance, a little more chaos can happen. Not always the case. Really not always the case. You know, because what ends up happening is, is people will look at the races, right? And a lot of these horses have the same number, but some of these horses have not gone that mile and a half different distance and that's the complete separator i mean it really is post time coming up shortly for the brooklyn back to michelle Greg, taking a look at this field in here, my top pick was the five next. He's coming off a third place finish behind Warrant and Red Run in that last. But that was off of a layoff. And I mean, you come off a break and you try to go a mile and a half, especially when you're a speed type horse. I feel like with that race under the belt, lots of reasons to be able to move forward. And the price seems square, in my opinion. I have to like Warren as well, even though, like Brad said, he's a little inconsistent and he doesn't back up one win with another win. Uh, he was very gutty to me in that victory in the Isaac Murphy and I've seen this horse over at Santa Anita a couple times he looks really good compared to the last time I saw him he's carrying really good weight and I just like the way that he warmed up over here so I'm gonna go ahead and try and see if he can't get himself a back-to-back -back W see if he can do it coming up but you know to Paulie's point too I know Brad has high expectations for himself and he should with all his success this horse has been pretty consistent Oh, he has. I mean, he carries his racetrack with him, fairgrounds. You know, when he, he, he shipped over to Santa Anita, that was a glacier pace when Stiletto Boy won that race. Defunded came back to win for Baffert. And so the seven's usually right there. There you see the picks there. Mick going with the nine. Michelle will, will stand the five next. And, and uh, pay attention to the five. Luan Machado is a, uh, uh, an up-and-coming jockey who is very, very good on the front end. And and if they let the, the five get away on the front end, that horse can stay, too, as well, the gray. I think Michelle made a good point, too, uh, uh, about the, the five horse uh, next. He's coming off a layoff, a going a mile layoff. and a half. Big layoff, yep. And, and, and there's just no way to replicate in the morning what a horse gets out of a race in the afternoon. So he, he should take a step forward. Seven, or five to two, excuse me, on warrant. Flavian Pratt, who he takes advantage when he can be forward. We'll see how aggressive he is earlier in the race here. 
with his five-year-old son of Constitution. Grade two, Brooklyn, mile and a half distance coming up. Let's go to Johnny Brial. And we're waiting now for next and code runner. Field of 10, set to go a mile and a half. Once around the Belmont Oval. And they're all in. And they're off in the 134th running of the Brooklyn. And from mid-pack, it is next who is going out for the early lead. On the outside is Warrant along with a Calibrate. In behind there is Alfio. And down at the rail is Red Run. Into the turn now with next on top here. Warrant on the outside runs in second. And then it is the duo of Calibrate and Red Run heads apart third and fourth. Alfio is next in fifth. Centavo far outside runs in sixth. Portos, the gray, is down at the rail and in seventh. Then comes Code Runner along with Bright Future and a break of four. Back to Forewarned, who trails the field in tenth. The opening quarter mile in 24 and one-fifth seconds. And now they're heading for the back stretch. And it is next the leader here by three-quarters of a length. Warrant pressing that pace in second. And then it's Red Run who's down at the rail and Calibrate on the outside. Half mile in 50 seconds as they continue in this mile and a half Brooklyn with next the leader here by a length. Warrant in second by a length. Red Run is third by a head. Calibrate is on the outside and next in fourth. And then it is Alfio who's in between horses. Centavo in the clear on the outside, followed by Portos. Now Bright Future begins to move up a couple of spots. Forewarned has gained ground, and Code Runner is now the trailer. Three quarters in 116, with Next continuing to lead here. Next has been in front right from the start, leads here by a half length. Warrant getting a bit closer now in second. Bright Future is in between horses. Calibrate looking to make a move now down towards the rail, and Red Run is there. It is Next and Warrant, and they are 1-2 midway on the turn. Red Run is running in third. Forewarned has now gained into fourth. Calibrate is fifth. Bright Future is dropping back, about to be passed on the outside by Portos and Centavo. It is next in front as they head for home. Next is the leader by two. Warrant giving chase in second as they pass the 3 16th marker. It is next, now in front by three, now in front by four. Then Warrant and Calibrate as they come on for the finish. It's going to be a front running victory here in the mile and a half Brooklyn for next. Next, the winner by two and a half at the end. And Calibrate was second and Red Run finished third. Next controls on the front end, Louis Machado and Another consistent runner here. This one, seven wins from 17 starts. Well, the last time this horse went 115 and four for six furlongs, 115 and two, the horse won by 19 lengths. Today, the horse got to go 116, and I don't know how much he won by. I told you guys at the top of the lane, Louis Machado had not even moved a muscle. This horse was gone. They decided to maybe turn this into a two horse race, Meg, but I told you this is a real horse, and Lewin gave this horse a great ride. Man, he just stayed. What a, I mean, a true marathon specialist. And nice ride, Lou Machado. First time at Belmont Park to deliver this kind of a flawless, poised ride. Yeah. And uh, listen, uh, Calibrate went well. With yeah, the nice, second, nice pick by you. Well, but second best. And uh, Michelle called it out. This horse ran well off the layoff. Hard to get a horse ready to go a mile and a half off of an extended layoff. Great job by his conditioner, William Cowens. What a nice horse. Five nine two seven three to one on next to his one three of his last four starts. This horse on quite a roll and loves this distance. Obviously two for three at this mile and a half trip. Prices for you when we come back. We're going to take a timeout when we return. Big six time on the way in the first of six grade ones on the card. We'll be back, it's next in the Brooklyn. Spun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. 
His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, standing at Gainesway. Bet the final leg of the Triple Crown no matter where you are with Naira Bets. Available nationwide, Naira Bets is the official betting app of the Belmont Stakes with video streaming, weekly promotions, and a one-of-a-kind VIP rewards program. Celebrate the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's legendary Belmont Stakes win and be a part of the action with Naira Bets. Scan now for your free $25 Belmont Stakes bet plus a $200 deposit match for new members with promo code FOX25. Every sire hopes to have a son to follow in his footsteps. An impressive debut. For Munnings, that son is Jack Christopher. Jack Christopher to win the champagne. Unbeaten grade one winner at two. Dual grade one winner at three. And he is pouring it on here. It is Jack Christopher winning the grade one H. Allen Jerkins Memorial. Jack Christopher, new to Coolmore America, home of champions. It's America's original sport, and no one covers it better than AmericasBestRacing.net. From the sport to the lifestyle, the best races, horses, and destination venues, cocktails, gambling, fashion, and more. AmericasBestRacing.net is a sport for you. Back on America's Day of the Races on Belmont Stakes Day. Six grade ones to come, including one up next, the first of those six. In the Ogden Phipps, you look at the great Secretariat statue. How about next performance? Gate to wire at this mile and a half distance of the Brooklyn. Got to set a very controlled and moderate pace. Paul, you were playing on a mile and 141, and school was out. Louis Machado went, next. Right? <laughs> I tell you what, he claimed this horse from Wesley Ward, which is the complete opposite. If a lot of people don't know, Wesley Ward specializes on horses that go six furlongs and below. And you know, an off the turf event got this horse on the dirt and boom, now a new career. Let's go to Michelle. Down here right now with uh, Luan Mikado. What a ride right there. You're coming off a sensational Churchill. How exciting is it to be up here right now? Uh, it's super exciting. Uh, I couldn't be anywhere else. I mean, I couldn't pick anywhere else to be right now, and it was just perfect, perfect day. I mean, a beautiful trip. He was, he settled down pretty easy for me today. He let me make, a, he let me make a good pace in front, and when they came to me, I just had a way more horse than then, and I was happy. I appreciate it. Best of luck with uh, the rest of the uh, some of the meet here, and congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Guys. Brazil native getting a big opportunity and making the most of it here on a big day. You know, it, it would be easy to be nervous and maybe get a little rattled on a major stage, the best of the best congregating here at Belmont Park. He, ro he rode that race like he's been riding at Belmont his whole life. You know, he could kick him right. I mean, he was at Turfway, he was riding with the boys there. He went to Keeneland, he rode well over there. He can flat out ride. He's very good on a front runner, you know, and he's changed this horse since Bill Cowens has put him on. He just lets this horse settle on the front end. And like I said, a new career on the dirt going long from a horse that was in the Wesley War Ward barn that basically broke the maiden on the turf going short. And now this horse is winning mile and a half races on the dirt. Pretty crazy. This rider too, he hasn't even been here that long. Came to the U.S. just in 2015. Yeah. Big victory for him. Really liked the poise he showed and just really delivered a picture-perfect ride. Yeah. Pick six is coming up next. And the first of our six grade ones on the program. Mile and a 16th, huge race in this distaff division. And how about this rivalry that has been playing out between last year's Kentucky Oaks winner Secret Oath and Clarier? It's gotten to be something special. It really has. I, I was there for the apple blossom, I still can't be, I, I still can't believe. And the crazy part about it is the thunderstorm started to come in as soon as Clarier unleashed her run and ran Secret Oak down 
Figueroa has run since in the La Charan. She got beat by Played Hard. So it'll be very interesting. This is going to be a fun race. Automatic entry with a win here into the Breeders' Cup disc staff November 4th. $60,000 in entry fees paid by the Breeders' Cup. And more, as you see there. So win and you're in race. And some of the big names in this division, obviously, as you would expect, showing up. Search results among them. But that victory last time out is clear here. Turn the tables on Secret Oath. You saw Steve Asmussen pumping his fist, running up and down, so excited that she came through in that moment. Well, to have a horse deliver that kind of performance, get up in the shadow way and run down a Kentucky Oaks winner yeah. in secret. Oh, that was some effort. You know, Steve, you know, when I was talking to Steve at Oakline, when Malathot left the, the division, Clarier and Malathot were battling back and forth, right? And Malathot got the best of her in the Breeders' Cup barely with Blue Stripe right in between them. And when Steve brought her back, he was like, okay, I'm going to have the champion, and then Secret Oath beat her. And now, okay, now that we have another rivalry, she was able to beat Secret Oath the next time, and it's a little fun. And, and you know, when I was there, Wayne shook Steve's hand, shook Steve's hand and said, I'll see you next time. So um, there was camaraderie there, and I think it's going to be a fun little race. It's really becoming a yeah. really good rivalry between these two. And Clarier, exceptionally talented, never wins by a lot because she comes from far out of it and off the pace, but she is very talented. It's going to be fun. Some other big names in here, too. Played hard, obviously. Search results, pass the champagne. Loaded group to kick off this great one Ogden Phipps here in this pick six. Love the budding rivalry. I think that captures the public's attention. Rivalries are good for the sport. And you know, Wayne Lucas isn't going to shy away from a challenge, and <laughs> neither is Steve Asmussen. Secret Oath, too. I mean, you talk about her performance coming back so good in that Azari. Now back-to-back -back near misses. But yeah, Wayne... He's going to show up just about every big day, you would think, assuming Secret Oath is in fine form. Yeah, it just that's just one thing about Wayne. And, you know, he, when he got beat by Clarier, when Secret Oath got beat by Clarier, I think Secret Oath got a little bit lost because she hit the lead a little too soon. We'll see what happens today. I think he needs more of a target Secret Oath with Tyler aboard. And he's going to get first jump on Clarier, but Clarier got her last time. We'll see what happens today. Let's go to Michelle. Thanks so much, guys. I'm joined by the Nassau County Executive, Bruce Blakeman. Welcome, first of all. Thank you so much, and thank you for wearing the county colors. I was well-versed in what I was supposed to be wearing today. I can see that. <laughs> it so happens that it's also Secretariat's colors, so that helps out. Exactly. You know, Secretariat won the Triple Crown right here in Nassau County at Belmont Racetrack. Yes, we know that, 50 years ago. Uh, I want to talk about how important it is for the uh, area and the tourism to have such a great relationship with Belmont Park. Well, this is a great institution here, and uh, this race in particular is probably one of the greatest races in the world. And we have racing season all summer, and uh, people come out here, they enjoy the beautiful area here, they, they enjoy our fine dining, our great restaurants, our beautiful beaches, and they get to see the best kind of horse racing in the world. So uh, we welcome people, and it's really good for the economy too. What's it like, the impact on the economy, having people by the hundreds of thousands come in for racing? Well, it brings millions and millions of dollars into the county, and uh, that keeps our people working. It keeps people uh, in their jobs, and we're very happy. Uh, this is a county that's open for business. Uh, we have a lot of world-class events. We're going to have the Ryder, uh, the Ryder Cup in two years, and um, we've had Joan Jett here. We've had all kinds of concerts. It's a great place and a great venue to see any kind of sporting event or any concert. You've mentioned the venue, you've mentioned Secretariat. What does it mean to Nassau County that Belmont Park is about to be updated and refurbished and, and modernized and what it's gonna mean to the whole community? Well, we're very pleased that the New York Racing Association is going to invest $400 million in a brand new clubhouse and racetrack. And uh, they're gonna make it really, really superb. And it's going to be one of the greatest racing facilities in the world. Uh, we needed a little update. It, it hasn't been updated in quite some time. So uh, we're looking forward to that investment. And of course, there'll be a lot of construction jobs and a lot of permanent jobs. And we wanna keep people working in Nassau County. I appreciate the time you took to uh, speak with us. Thank you so much. And, and we're all dressed appropriately to represent Nassau County. Well done, Michelle Yu. <laughs> Crowd continuing to, to pack it in here, and we're starting to feel that buzz and that electricity in the air a little bit, as we should with a grade one coming up. It's like the build up to the championship bout, right? Yep. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. Monster race in the disc staff division for Phillies and Mares coming up with a grade one Ogden Phipps. And 
This still to come. Who will be handling this hardware? The August Belmont Trophy and the test of the champion and the Belmont Stakes still ahead. Light line is in full flight. Light line turns it on at the top of the stretch and he's in cruise control. And flight line takes off. Take a good look at this because you're not going to see this too often. Maybe never again. Flight line, 20 lengths clear. World class racehorse, world class performance at a world championship event. We're back at America's Day of the Races on FS1. Regional Network's out in Southern California. Beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Elmont, New York. It's brought to you in part by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual, unusually, well, 155th edition of the Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Betts. Gates open 7.02 Eastern time. A look at the field that will line up let's meet the field for this year's running brad cox has three that will line up including long shot tap at shoes yeah long shot with a good pedigree and a horse that's developing we heard chad uh, uh, excuse me brad cox earlier say it's not summer yet <laughs> <laughs> jose ortiz will ride from the inside big test first and graded stakes company for tap at shoes tap at trice one of two for todd fletcher yeah seventh place finish in the kentucky derby and i you know I thought the most fancied horse would probably be your favorite, but right now it's six to one and overlay on the board. It's amazing. And there's, there's quite a bit of money in there right yeah. now. Archangelo, we had Jenna Antonucci on the set earlier. That gritty, hard fought battle win in that Peter Pan. He's like a very intelligent son of Arrogate. He's made steady progress in his career. I like the fact she said he was in his stall sleeping, a horse that takes care of himself. Those are the kind that get a mile and a half. National treasure, Bob Baffert, return to the scene in the Triple Crown, and of course goes gate to wire for the win of the Preakness. Not since 1922 has a horse skipped the Derby and won the Preakness and the Belmont, but Bob Baffert has ran in the Derby and won the Preakness and the Belmont with point given, so I don't put anything past Bob and National Treasure. Gonna try and wire the field again. Here, Miracolo, good long shot here for Antonio Sano. By terrific sire, gun runner, terrific horseman, and Antonio Sano, but Il Miracolo is going to need a Miracolo. Yes, he will. See what price he is. 30 to 1 morning line. Probably going to be a lot bigger than that. Forte, the two year old champ, would have been the favorite in the Derby, got scratched the morning of. Isn't he stoic? Looks like he's looking right through you. And listen, he's the two year old champ, and he's six for seven. He's got 2.4 million in the bank. The question is, is he ready to run today? Two more for Brad Cox. We'll see next. Hit show, the grade three Withers winner in New York. Back in February, we'll have Manny Franco aboard. 
Uh, I thought his derby was uh, better than maybe it looks at first blush. This is a horse that's, I think, suited for the mile and a half because he's a kind of a grinder, a one pace. He stays on doggedly. A lot of talk that his stable mate is going to love this distance. Angel of Empire, that closing third in the Kentucky Derby, will put blinkers on, Paulie. Yeah, and Chad Brown said he's been working this horse with blinkers in and out. He doesn't know if it's going to change much, but he does think that this horse will get the mile and a half. He told me a long time ago he thought this was his Belmont horse, and he keeps progressing and getting better and better. And red route one, he's going to be very far back early. Steve Asmussen will have Joel Rosario back aboard. Yeah, it just feels like the race isn't going to set up well for him to get the mile and a half. He's by Gunrunner, too. I wouldn't put anything past Steve Asmussen or an offspring of Gunrunner, but Red Route 1 would be a surprise for me. All right, so that's the field that will line up in this 155th edition of the Belmont Stakes. Mig, where are you going to wind up? I'm with Tappet Trice. No horse is trained better up to the Belmont Stakes than Tappet Trice. He's got the pedigree, he's got the connections, and he's got that impeccable stride that will stay the mile and a half. I'm all about Tappet Trice. Molly? Um, wow, We're, I'm on Tappet Trice too as well. I just think physically, when I got to see him at the Derby, he's physically so much bigger than a, a lot of these horses. In his race in the bluegrass, I thought Louis gave him an unbelievable ride to keep him up close. He just got buried in, in the Derby field so far back. I thought he ran a lot better. And by the time he was about making his move, he was actually making a bigger move, and he ran into the Japanese horse. It kind of stopped his, his momentum a little bit. Was he ever winning in the Derby? No, but I think he was going to run a solid fourth or fifth. And I'm with Mig. I think his stride will take over the mile and a half because I don't think it's going to be that quick of a pace. And the word going in the Derby was, oh, he's a horse that doesn't like kickback, and he can't take anything inside. Well, maybe he learned a lot from that. And with a smaller field today, I think he's just got the big stride, and he wins the race. Let's go to Michelle for your selection. Well, guys, way back in the beginning of the year, I remember seeing National Treasure, and I told Tom Ryan, that horse is going to win the Belmont Stakes. So now we end up here. I was not expecting him to win the Preakness, and he did that, so it kind of threw my plans for a loop. But I've been on him for this long. I'm going to stick on him. National Treasure is my pick in the Belmont. I just think that the way he can run, maybe loose on the lead or with a tiny bit of pressure, he's got a great high cruising speed, is going to be really conducive uh, to this particular racetrack. I don't necessarily love come from the clouds closers on the Belmont um, configuration. So for me, it is going to be national treasure. See if we can wire him again. I'm with the guys on the desk here. I think it's Nash, uh, tap it, try, excuse me. Todd Pletcher has said all along this horse with that big galloping stride is going to love these big turns, sweeping turns here at Belmont Park. And that problem in the Kentucky Derby, people say, well, what happened to him in that race? He was inside of horses for a lot of that race that he couldn't get outside and really get into that good rhythm where he's at his best. I think that happens today. Tappet Trice, obviously the pedigree too, to be brilliant at this distance, trying to bring Tappet a fifth winner in the Belmont. Cannot believe this horse is at 6-1 to one right now. I know, and the amazing part about it is if you look at the Belmont field, it just shows you the impact Tappet has had. You have Tappet Shoes, you have Tappet Trice, you have Arc Angelo, who the bottom side is Tappet. You have uh, a couple other horses in here. Aaron Miraculo, I know he might mean a miraculous, but he's a Tappet mare. I mean, look all over. Red Route 1, Tappet mare. Hit show, Hit Tappet show. mare. It's unreal. Yeah. Any kind of tap of the pedigree, it's you <laughs> automatically, you just need to show up and give it a shot and <laughs> right? see what happens. Yeah. We cannot wait. Again, 7.02 Eastern start time for the Belmont Stakes right now. It's the first of those six great ones coming up on this tremendous program. And a throw down in the distaff division. And the rematch, third straight time. They're going to line up together. Clarier, Secret Oath, played hard. Got... The better a secret oath last time out as well. We're going to talk about her in a moment. But this one, five-year-old mare, daughter of Curlin for Steve Asmussen and Stone Street Stables. She can just grind you down. Incredible the way she came with this run. Now, secret oath maybe did hit the front a little early. No fault of Tyler Gaffione's. The horse on the lead kind of gave it up and left her alone on the lead. But when you've got a two-length lead inside the eighth pole and get run down, you got to give a lot of credit to the horse that ran you down. True. And you could see Clarier had her ears up, and then she pinned him back when she went by. Um, you know, Clarier is kind of reminding me of a mini Zenyatta as she's gotten to five. Now, is she as good as Zenyatta? No. Let's be honest, no. Um, but 
it's taken her a little bit longer to get going and get in her stride, Megan. She's gotten a little bit older, and she's left herself more to do in the race. I don't know about you, Paul. It takes me a little longer to get in the stride right. now as I've gotten older. Yeah, true. <laughs> 12 of her 18 starts, so even with that come from behind style, she's been first or second at the highest level. And she's well drawn. Uh, the mile and the 16th at Belmont, it's about four and a half, nearly five furlongs to the, the far turn yeah. before you got to make a turn. So you're not concerned with saving ground early. You just allow yours to get into that nice rhythm yeah. before you got to make any decisions. Yeah, and, and I think the ultimate separator here is, and I understand Sultry Zoltz is, is the same way too, but when you look at Clarier, you know, she beat Secret Oath, she lost a Secret Oath. She traded punches with Malathot. She lost to Latruska when Latruska was really, really good at that time. You look at her last eight or nine races, she's ran against some monster mares. Kept, kept the best coming. Yes. Meanwhile, Secret Oath got the better of Clarier, her first start of the season. Looks so good coming back for D. Wayne Lucas. And Tyler Gaffleone will have the call. There she is, last year's Kentucky Oaks winner. And a look at the lot, Troyen, last time out in that narrow defeat against Plate Hard. Yeah, listen, Plate Hard, Ren, you got to give her credit. She was game. She fought every step of the way. It looked like Secret Oath had dead aim going back to the site of her greatest victory, the Kentucky Oaks. But Johnny Velasquez always shrewd, always has a little something left. Comes out into her, not enough to warrant a disqualification, but enough to make her really engage and fight. One thing Paul and I were noticing, Greg, when they, she walked in, uh, we, we, we're talking about Secret Oath. She's a mare that can lighten up at times. She's carrying great weight. She's making a really nice impression. I thought she looked good, too. The other part is, you know, when I was at Churchill, we discussed this in America's Day at the Races, and, and all over the Oakland horses were struggling going to Churchill. It was just one of those things. I don't know what it is. Secret Oath ran a big race that day. Now play hard. For some reason that day, the rail, it, it, you watched the race, they were way off the rail. The rail was dead that day. And when Secret Oath made it, uh, her run in the middle of the racetrack, she just couldn't go by. So, um, you know, Mig made a good point with her big, long stride. Will she like the big sweeping turns a little bit more here? I got a feeling Secret Oath's going to appreciate Belmont. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think it's going it's to play well to her stride, and she's going to get in that rhythm. Uh, I think there's some pace. I think search results obviously uh, played hard. And I think Secret Oath does get first run on Clarier. And if she relishes Belmont the way I think she does, she's got a chance to turn the tables on her again. Uh, there's no question she's going to get first run on her. And, you know, we talked about last year. She was so good early on in the year. Obviously, she won the Oaks. D. Wayne was thinking about putting her against the boys in the Derby at one point. But that's just the result of a long campaign when we saw her kind of lose some weight, get a little bit lighter. That she just she ran in a lot of big races last year. They're, they're not machines. At, at some point, they go what we call over the top, right? They've had a hard campaign. And she is a mare that runs hard. She puts a lot into her races, and that's why she tends to lighten up. I, again, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing from her from a physical perspective. Well, when she won the Azari, she looked phenomenal. Um, and then she came back in the Apple Blossom, and, and I thought she looked great, too. And, you know, she just got run down. Now Lasix are off. And, you know, those two races were with Lasix. I don't think that makes any kind of difference at all. Secret Oath is it's, she's the kind of filly that maybe needs to be timed a little bit. And then what do you do with search results? Because she seems like she's, like, always right there but just can't punch her, her pitcher in the winner's circle. Look at the pace that search results was attending last year in this race, in the Ogden Phipps. 22 and 2, 45 and 1, 109 It was an one. incredible performance. It was an incredible performance. Now, do you foresee that kind of pace today? I don't. True. One of the be be best races she'd ever run, and that was in defeat running third that day. She is the second choice on the board right now at 2-1. to one. There she is. Flavie and Pratt will ride. Chad Brown trains. Klarovich stables. A little surprised she's taking this much money. Well, I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, secret oath. She's maybe regressing a little bit, and she's ran a lot. But this is D. Wayne Lucas. He runs his horses. They don't grow moss on their feet, okay? They run, and if he thinks they're ready, they're going to run. I'm surprised that she's almost fourth choice in this race. She's third choice. Um, maybe that will change a little bit. 
Um, played hard is getting bet. I, I get it. I just don't know if that horse after that race can make duplicated here at Belmont at five to two. I mean, I just think Secret Oath's a way better wager than Play It Hard is today. Meanwhile, leg up to Flavia and Pratt. You look at that, that La Troyenne, she was a very narrow third there. She's been less than a length. And that was her starting point for this five-year-old campaign. That was her comeback race. And now throw into the factor for search results, three starts at Belmont, two wins, and a bang up third in that Ogden Phipps chasing a hot, hot pace. Looking at her in the paddock, I mean, she looked like a cat ready to just pounce the way she was so light on her feet and, 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 and kind of bouncing along. Man, she elevated in my mind just watching her in the paddock. She unfortunately, I mean, she gave Malathot some incredible battles just to ride. If not for Malathot, we'd be talking about her as one of the most dominant distaffers in a long, long time. Yeah. Maybe this is her year. And you know, I, I brought up that point off the bench that last start. Look, that was off a long layoff, her five-year-old starting point. If that's the return and she's going to move forward off that, she's going to be a load to handle. She is. And, you know, when she ran against Ma Malathot in the personal incident last year, she got a concussion at the gate. Remember, she was way, way back, and she went to the sideline since there. And Brad and it, Steve told me, listen, it took me a little while to get her back going. She ran tremendously in the distaff up the rail. And maybe he is. she's getting back to the old Clarier. There she is. There's Clarier, two to one favorite for Asmussen with Rosario. And, you know, obviously coming from off the pace, is she going to get that pace up front to try and run down? I think there's going to be some pace on. I don't think you're going to get the pace you got last year in the same race. No, but let me ask you a quick question. Would you rather have a, a baseless race or with Clarier and be like maybe three, four lengths out of it? Well, you think she's got the best kick home? But, but I, I think that's a great point because it's a balancing act, right? If you're riding a speed horse, it, the idea is not to go as slow as you possibly yeah. can go. It's to go at a, a, a clip that makes everybody else work to stay with you at the same time saving a little something. I think guys make a mistake. They go to lead, they throw out the anchor. So in essence, your strategy becomes, I'm going to outclose the closers. Not a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs> First of six grade ones coming up. All the stars showing up on this program as we get into the best of what's ahead here. Um, it's Tappet Trice for all of us. Yeah, a lot of weight and on Tappet Trice. Stakes, there's a lot of weight on that horse. Finally, in this race, guys, again, who do you like? You want to go first? I like Secret Oath. I really yeah. do. I think D. Wayne Lucas, 3-1. to one. Everybody's forgetting about D. Wayne. He's a legend. I'm calling an audible. I'm at the line of scrimmage. I'm reading Blitz. The two search results. <laughs> <laughs> Still to come, 155th running of the Belmont Stakes on Network Fox at 3 Eastern in just a minute or so from now. Enjoy it. The momentum continues for War Dancer as Ms. Big Bucks goes wire to wire. Ms. Big Bucks will pull off the upset in the nightcap. Her full brother, Bucker 2, and Brennan's War score a War Dancer exacta. Bucker 2 in front, Brennan's War on the outside. The two of them come on for the finish, and it is Bucker 2. And New York Anthem kicks off the year going a perfect 2 for 2. New York Anthem not going down without a fight. Shouldn't you?